Hey, hey, not so fast. I want a word. What have I done now? Nothing, love. Don't worry. If you see that sister of yours, you're not to speak to her, Jamie. What? She's no longer part of his family. What's he all about? Ignore him, he's been stupid. Oh, uh, ignore me, everybody else does. Tommy, you've been totally unreasonable. It's not fair on Craig. She's chosen to walk away from her family. I don't care, I won't have you using him like this. Can I go to school now, please? Yeah, you can, love. See you tonight. Thanks for backing me up there, aren't you? <sighs> if you want to ignore Katie, fine. But she's still my daughter and she's still Craig's sister. I don't think you understand how strongly I feel about this. Tommy, the whole world knows how you feel, but ignoring Kate is not going to achieve anything. I think uh, <coughs> my toothbrush and your toothbrush look uh, dead cute together. Oh, yeah. Stop in there. Of course I'm stopping. I've commandeered every spare inch of your cupboard space. Look, I know what a wrench it is to leave home for the first time. You have to be sure it's what you want and... Uh, I don't know. I feel like I'm driven a wedge between you and your family, and I feel lousy. The only one making life difficult for everybody is my dad. Yeah, well, I can kind of understand how he feels. I mean, it was bad enough as going out, never mind moving in together. <sighs> Sounds like you're the one having second thoughts. Well, no, not about you, but... Well, I can't help feeling guilty that I'm the one causing all this aggravation and hurt. If people just accepted us, there wouldn't be any aggravation. Well, that's not going to happen in hurry, is it? Yeah, but it will eventually. Mm. Look, don't make any toast for me, I've got to go. You will eat something though, won't you? Yes. Got banana and bikini in my bag. Good. So I'll uh, see you tonight. Mm. Mm. I've been able to say that. Yeah, I'm me. Oh, uh, <clears throat> I forgot. This is a bit embarrassing. What? Uh, I haven't got any money for my dinner. All oh, right. Hang about. Uh, fine to do. Yeah, thanks. I'll give you it back when I get paid. No, no, you don't need to. Forget it. I begged my to stop saying that. I know you did. Next thing I know, he's moved her in. She's moved in? <laughs> it beggars belief. It really does. I mean, what kind of man out moves a 17-year-old girl into his flat? Because mm -hmm. he's trying to prove to you that you really is serious about it. Only that just makes it worse. You know, I sat in a room last night and I sobbed my heart out. Mm. Should... Tommy's gone overboard. So he's washed his hands of Katie and so we're fighting like cat and dog. Oh, it's unbearable, it really is. Hello, Katie. Hey, do you fancy some fish and chips, mate? Yeah, whatever. We'll get a video out and all if you like. Look, I'm uh, sorry about having a go at you this morning. You're a good lad. Good. Because you haven't done out wrong. Yeah. Put it on my head. Come on. Come on. Oh, yes! <laughs> well, could you go and play with that somewhere else? Because I'm trying to cash up. We're only having a kick around, honest. I know, but it's against the garage door over and over again. It's like a form of torture. We'll be careful. No, thank you. See you later, mate. Is this ball, then? Get lost, will you? I don't know why you've been so funny with me. It's not my fault what my dad and Katie have done. I suppose. Hiya. Hiya. Everything all right? What do you think? Oh, Mum, I Katie, you best get back to your new home. Angela? You all right? Yeah, yeah. Everything's fine. Actually, no, n n no, it isn't. Nothing's fine. Well, I was just about to open a bottle of wine. I ain't drinking alone. <laughs> I shouldn't. It's nice and chilled. Okay, thank you. <laughs> oh, hey, thanks for this. Any time. Oh, I just had to get out of the house. Tommy's snapping at everything. And, oh, Craig's so scared he won't come out of his room. Can't be easy. It's not. I feel like I've lost her, me own daughter. Well, I know how that feels. Do you? Sarah's not speaking to me. I can't see my own granddaughter. They only live at the end of the street. 
Might as well be a million miles away. I know. So Katie, today I didn't know whether to hug her or slap her. Tommy won't even have her name mentioned in the house. It's like she's dead. It'll be shock. He'll come round. No, not Tommy. He loves her so much. He always has. She's his little princess. It's him really hard. Martin's not a bad man. Tommy thinks he's the devil. He wouldn't have planned on taking Katie away from you. He's not like that. We were married for ten years. He's a very decent man. I don't care how decent he is. It's wrong what he's doing. She's just turned 17. He's nearly 20 years older than she is. Girl, this is tearing me apart. I know. I just miss her so much. I know it's only been a couple of days, but... Suppose it goes on. Families have rifts that go on for years. I can't bear it. All you want to do is keep them safe. Make sure no harm comes to them. They grow up so quick. And they make mistakes. And they won't be told. But you never stop loving them. No. You never stop. No matter how much they break your heart. <laughs> Could I, uh, could I have Katie's old room? Suppose. No, no, you can't. Why not? Because it's Katie's. Yeah, but she's gone now. Well, she'll be back. But if she don't come back? I said no. I'll see you lot later. Where's the time I get a kiss goodbye? Hiya. I said hello, Dad. Good day, Dad. I am not gonna just give up, you know. Oh, Katie, I've had a really hard day. But you know how I feel about you, so why don't you just leave me alone? Because it's really upset Martin. It's really upset me. I don't want to be your friend. I don't even want to talk to you, and I'm not gonna accept that you are Martin's girlfriend. I'm okay. Oh, um, hi. Um, can I have a word? Yeah. <clears throat> How are you? Fine. Considering no one around here will talk to me. Well, you, um, you upset a lot of people, you and Martin. I didn't realise it was such a big crime falling in love. Kate, you know it's more than that. Love, I don't want to argue with you. Me neither. <sighs> I miss you. The house seems empty. No one for Craig to fight with. <laughs> Love, why don't you come home? If you do, I know we can sort things out. You'll still be able to see Martin. What? My dad's really going to agree to that, is he? No, Mum, I live with Martin now. You are as stubborn as your father. <sighs> Why do you come to the flat? I'd like that. No, love, I can't. You don't. Oh, you fret enough, find out. I'm in an awkward situation. I'm stuck between the pair of you. Well, it's not for the first time, but since you moved out, it... You know your dad won't be happy. But you could have handled things more carefully instead of shutting us both out. I love, I'm worried about you. I love you. I know you do. But I love your dad and all. And I'll not be pulled both ways, Katie. I know what your dad's like, just like you do. And if I thought he were in the wrong, I'd say so. You know that. But you don't. It's all you're doing, and you know it is. I'm with your dad on this, Katie. I'm just... Well, all I can do is hope that you come to your senses and come on. Oh. Kev's been on a breakdown all afternoon. I've been run ragged. Oh, nice. I'll run your bath. Put some bubbly in it. Oh, you know, I don't like that stuff. It makes me stink. Yeah, have lavender. Much <laughs> nicer smell than engine oil. Tom, it's all okay today. Oh, uh. I asked to come home. I said that if she came on, that we'd find a way of sorting it out. Because we would, wouldn't we? Because that's what we want, isn't it? What did she say? Well, novelty's not worn off yet, but it will. It's bound to soon. Maybe. You're going to have to face it, love. 
She's left home. She's not coming back. No, I won't accept that. Well, accept this. So long as she's seen Martin Platt, she's not welcome back here. When they finish, I'll talk to her, but not before. Oh. Hello. Hi. Oh, do you know, my mind's been all over the place today. First I forgot me milk, then the sugar. Everything all right? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. You know, it was so good to talk last night. Well, I just wanted you to know that you're not on your own. I don't think there's such a thing as a normal family. <laughs> I just hate being in the middle. Neither Katie nor Tommy will see any sense. I just want some peace. Mm, that's all any of us want. Tommy blows up even at the mention of her name. I should learn to keep my thoughts to myself, eh? You're not frightened of him, are you? <laughs> no, of course oh. not. <laughs> I don't, don't see the point in getting him worked up. Well, any time you feel like a chap, you know where I am. Thank you. That means a lot. Clearing out Katie's stuff. Don't worry, I'm doing it carefully, it won't break. But why? Why are you clearing out her stuff? Well, Dad said I could have her room. Did he? There's no lagers left. How the hell should I know? I'm not the one to drink some. What's the matter with you? Why did you say that Craig could have Katie's room? It's empty. I said this morning he wants to have it. Well, where's the arm? The arm? Is it now she gonna feel her? When she is that she ain't got a room here anymore. This is her home. And I want to feel that she can come back and be welcome. She can come back when she's finished with him. Oh, I know what you're doing. You're trying to get rid of her out this house. Everything about her, all her stuff. Oh, is that right? It never crossed your mind that I needed that room to stay the way it was. What for? You may have washed your hands of her, Tommy, but I haven't. She's my daughter. And as long as that room stayed the way it were, I could see her back in it. And thanks to you, I can't anymore. <laughs> Talk like she's dead. No, only because you act like she is. They're deaf all night in Dad. Don't worry, I'll catch up with them. Twenty pounds? You're making it up as you go along. Ten quid a ball. And if you lay a finger on any more of my son's footballs, I'll be wanting more in compensation. Oh, will you? Now, now let's all stay calm. I'm very calm, love. Look, you're Craig's pal. Threatened to put the shop windows through. Before or after he wrecked their ball. Does it make any difference? If only they'd go to the red wreck. I want him where I can keep an eye on him. It's thud, thud, thud against the garage door. It's not exactly the end of the world, is it? Oh, so you endorse your Craig's behaviour? That's between me and my lad. What I don't endorse is him stabbing his football. That's just a red rag to a bull, is that? Yes, well, we can see where he gets that from. <laughs> Weren't you whatever young? I've only got ten pounds on me here. You can drop the rest around tomorrow. <laughs> here. Make sure you get it back off him, ladies. We don't want it back. Norris may have gone overboard, but those children need to learn some manners. They were only having a kick about. <sighs> Come on, let's go. Hold on your turn. I'm not stopping long. <laughs> nice little girl. If only they would have volume switch. Just kids, aren't they? I wish our Katie were knocking about with him instead of being shacked up with a fella old enough to be a dad. Must be tough. It kills me. And there's absolutely no I can do about it. Quick, give us some tea bags. I've just nipped out what new boys in the back. Down there on the right. Yep. Ah, Nick keeping you on your toes, is he? I've got nothing to say to you, Martin. Fine, it makes no difference to me. We never speak again. Good. We don't treat your own daughter like that. Oh, I treat my daughter's none of your business. Look, why don't you come round and see her sometime? It's all right, don't worry, I make myself scarce. Come on, Brand, I'll get me one, thank you. Oh, Ringer. You must be dying to speak to her. I know she wants to speak to you. Thank you. Thanks. Did you pack the others? Uh, no, actually, I've got to get back. There's something in while you've got to do. Afternoon delight. Okay. See you. See you, love. Katie? Katie? Hiya. How are you? Okay. Were you going to blank me then? <laughs> no, I didn't see you. Listen, we can't go on like this. Why don't you just try talking to your dad? Is there any point? Angela, what are you doing? Get in here! 
I don't think so, do you? I saw you. You went across the street to speak to She's her. She's me daughter. Look, if we show signs of weakness now, they'll think they've won. I was going to try and explain why you're doing what you're doing. She knows why. I was going to try and get her to see things from your point of view, but then what happened? I thought we'd agree not to talk to her. shouting across the street at me like some dog off its lead. You actually went out your way. Oh, Martin Platt may be bad, but he treats Katie with more respect than you've just shown me. What are you doing? I don't be going back out here to speak to her. I am going to the pub for my dinner, because if I stay here, you're going to end up with my knife and fork up your nostrils. I'm sorry. So you should be. I was out of order shouting across the street like that. Yeah, you were. It's just doing me head in. Well, stop taking it out on me. Can I get you a drink? No, you can't. I'm going back to work. I'll tell you one thing, Tom. It's killing me not being able to speak to me old daughter. Oh, it's doing me a power of good. Well, there's a thing in it. You only think about yourself. It's about time you considered me and all this. Don't you as stubborn as each other. Can't you see that one of you's got to make the first move? I don't see why it should be me. Because you're the grown-up. You're supposed to be more mature. If you wait for her to do it, you wait forever. She's head over heels in love, or she thinks she is, and she's not going to give that up for her dad, is she? So what can I do? Because I can't just sit back and accept it. Tom, I've tried telling you before, but you refuse to listen. Half the fun for teenagers is kicking against the parents. If she's got an out to kick against, well, maybe she'll lose interest. So I'm just supposed to pretend that I don't mind? Well, I can handle that when every time I think of it, I think of it shacked up with that nonsense. Well, there you go again, getting all wound up. I'm not asking you to give me a blessing. I'm asking you to be civil to her. And you really think that'll work? Well, it's worth a try, isn't it? OK. Give it a try. Is, uh, is Katie in? Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I'll just let her know that you're here. Martin, are you coming back to bed, or...? What? <clears throat> I didn't expect to see you here, obviously. Um, I, I think I'll leave you to it. No. What if she's got to say she can say to both of us? Well? I think your dad's ready to talk. Oh, and I'm supposed to feel flattered. Katie, he feels bad about the way things are, and he just wants to break the ice, that's all. So we'll be in the row visit dinner time, and... I just thought that you might fancy popping in. What was the point? To try and patch things up, that's the point. You're his daughter, he misses you, and he's your dad. Don't tell me you like the way things are. Oh, come on, Katie. At least we could meet him halfway. Yeah, well, it's not going to change out. I'm not leaving Martin. Yeah, he knows that. So, will you come? I don't know, I'll have to think about it. OK, then, right, we, uh, we might see you there. Well... Well, at least it gets you out of here. Instead of hiding your face all the time. Yeah, and that's another reason for not going. Oh, you know what it'll be like? Everyone whispering and staring. So? Let them! Unless you're ashamed to be seen with me. No. <laughs> well, take me out. Float me. Let's make them jealous. It'll be all right. You'll see. Well, he doesn't look like the coming. Why don't we just go? Too late for that, I'm afraid. I'll be out there just watching the football. That's a drink, OK. Did you know they were going to be here? No, honest. All right, so I thought they might be here. Right, I'm oh, off. Oh, please, Tom, remember what we agreed. I said I'd be civil to her, didn't you, in. Yeah, what could one without the other? We'll never win it back that way. I'll move you to it. Right. Oh, this ain't gonna work. Have you seen the look on his face? Yeah. Nothing a pint won't cure. Hiya. Can I get you a drink? Um, no, no, you're all right. We'll get us on. Thanks, anyway. Told you. Hey, he's still here, isn't he? At least that's something. Look, it's probably not helping me being here, is it? Oh, you're not leaving me on my own. Well, go over there and say something to him then. We're not going to get anywhere this way, are we? Well, go on then. Oh, come with me. Come on. 
Ayah. Ayah. Nice to see ya. Yeah, you and all. Well, this is all very cosy, isn't it? Not now, Les. You know, I'm surprised at you. I thought you'd have given him a good pasting. I know I would have done if I'd have laid a finger on either of my daughters. Especially at her age. I knew you were acting all pally with him. What do you know? How could you possibly know what you I'm a dead off me! Don't even come near! Sorry, love, I'm sorry. See that? See that? That man's a nutter! You alright? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. You okay? Yeah. Oh, I. No one asks how I am. Is there any more? Why? You're going to hit me if there isn't. Eh? Where's this coming from? I don't hit you. No, not yet, you haven't. First time you do, mate, I'm out that door. It's not me picking a fight. It makes a change. Les Battersby were asking for it. Les Battersby had nothing to do with it. He was just a convenient target. He thought he were being clever. Oh, come on, man. Les Battersby does deserve a smack, even the police hit him. You see, you've got Craig on it now. Punch in the mouth, that's your answer to everything, isn't it? This was our big chance to build some bridges, Tommy, but no doubt you've got a better way. Yeah, best way of all. Go back to ignoring her and the perv altogether. <laughs> Problem solved. <laughs> I was half hoping you'd come home and tell me that my mum had put my dad in hospital with a frying pan over his head after yesterday. Mm. Yeah, sadly not. But let's batters be well, he can drive a saint to violence. Never mind your dad. <laughs> I hope you're not defending him. Oh, no, but he can be a right pain in the gluteus maximus, as us nurses like to say. Martin, everyone was making an effort yesterday. Yeah. And my dad couldn't stand that, so he tried to pick a fight. Best thing we can do is not have anything to do with him ever again, OK? Yeah, fine. Look, I'm not arguing. I'm a lover, not a fighter. Yeah, I know. I'm glad. Mm -hmm. Angela, look, if you want, I'll knock off now and I'll come and buy you a drink. <laughs> not a... Uh, did you and Tommy have a big wedding then? <laughs> no. Can we talk about something pleasant, please? Oh, hey, Les. Are you coming for a drink? Oh, not safe, is it? Blokes picking fights. And you can tell your husband I'd have knocked him into the middle next week. If that meant me being sent back inside. Me mum slept in the spare room last night with that mad with him. Good. How do you expect him to react? Because Martin the perv, you know. Oh, well, that's dead mature, innit? Look, I'll see you. Craig, you're my brother. You can still talk to me. I can't, you know I will be. Look, if it gets too much, then come round to me, Martin's, yeah? Do I look like I have a death wish? Hiya. Good day, Paul. Yeah, I suppose. See ya. I'm on my own. For the first time in my life, I would rather it be Jehovah's Witnesses. Oh, don't be like that, love. Well, how do you expect me to be? Especially after yesterday. Well, that's what I'm here for, to say I'm sorry. Oh, fine. Apology accepted. Can we talk? Does he know you're here? No, but it will do if I stand here much longer. Careers evening. Careers evening with parents. Mm. Well, you should ask them. There's one thing I know about my future, and that is that it doesn't involve them. What are you on today? Two ten. Oh, so I'm going to be all on my lonesome. Oh, never mind. Well, only one <laughs> meal that you have to throw in the bin now. Uh -huh. mm. Well, actually, I was thinking of uh, asking a few mates round. Yeah? Well, it was your idea. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. About the time you introduced me to your mates. Uh, don't be getting any ideas. Mm. No chance. There's only one school girl around here I'm interested in. Good. Mm. Oh, Friday the 14th of November. We're having this careers evening for year 12. It says that it would be beneficial for both pupils and parents to attend. Tom. Tom, what do you think? About what? What, this careers thing? It says that parents should go. I'm not going to know careers evening. <sighs> Why not? 
Do I have to spell it out to you? Look, I know Katie's made some mistakes, but we can't just write her off. We're talking about a future here. She don't want us there. She don't want no to do ears. That's fine by me. Good daddy. This older man mm -hmm. we keep hearing about. Oh, he's working. You might see him later if you stay around. Oh, I've got to be on my half eleven. None of that for you though, eh, Katie? No, I can do what I want, when I want, and I don't have to answer it to anybody. <laughs> nice gaff, Katie. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah. Must make up for your fella being 20 years older. Uh, I am not going out with him for his flat. Yeah, I know, but it must help. Mm. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Hey, can I ring Bernie and Nicky? I want to come round. You don't mind, do you? Oh, no, as long as you don't stand too long. <laughs> then can I ring Beth? Oh, come on. I've been banned from using hours. I haven't spoken to her in ages. Go on, then. Katie Harris, you never told us there was booze in the flat. There's all kinds. Lives and wine and everything. Oh, nice one. Uh, actually, most of that is Martin's. Oh. Sorry. Aren't we allowed to drink it? Uh, no, it's not that. Um, Martin won't mind. I mean, well, you know, I can do what I like. Yeah, just drink what you want. Great. Oi, you lot. Anyone for vino? <laughs> Look, it is Martin's. I thought you said we could drink what we want. We can, but not that. It was a present and it is dead expensive. Oh, come on, Katie. One drink is no big deal. I just don't want you to open it, okay? Look, Katie. will you get up? <gasps> what the? Martin. What's going on? Turn that music off, will you? Oh. You're really? What the hell is this? You said you were going to have a few mates round. Yeah, I know. Well, I've... Yeah, you didn't say you were going to wreck the flaming flat. Jake, come on. Uh, what is that? Now, I hope that's no one in our bed. Uh, hiya. Right. Out. Now. Come on. Martin, you're making a show of me. God, Katie. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I'm sorry for trusting you to act like a grown-up. I thought this was your fella, not your dad. Come on. Let's go. Yeah, everyone, come on, out. Come on. Look, we'll tidy up if you want. Oh, no, you won't. The party's over. Out. Come on. Sorry. Look, I've told you, I will tidy it up. No. Have you checked your levels? Uh, what do you think? What are you doing? Just go to bed, will you? Huh? Are you sending me? We'll talk about this in the morning. No, we'll talk about this now. What is your problem? Well, is it not obvious? Uh, no. All right. I don't like coming home after a hard day's work, finding me flat, trashed. Oh, so it's your flat now, is oh, it? Oh, you're out of order, you are. No, this was your idea. Yeah. I expected you to be here with a few of your mates sharing half a pizza. And they expect half the flaming school. Yeah, well, I thought you wanted me to start acting my age. And look at the state of the place. There's cans everywhere. There's music blaring away. Kids, that's it in me bed. Yeah, well, that is what 17-year-olds do. We go out and get drunk. It is what you're called having a laugh. Yeah. Yeah, well, maybe everyone's right. This ain't gonna work. Maybe the age gap is too much. Well, if you don't like it, you know what you can do. One of these, do you? Yeah, cola, please, Roy. Oh, yes. Sure. Hi, love. Oh, correct. <clears throat> Hiya. Hiya. Um, listen, it's that careers evening tonight, isn't it? Yes, that I'm looking forward to it. Well, you should be, love. It's important. I was thinking of coming, actually. But? But I didn't think you'd want me there. I thought you were going to say my dad didn't want you there. He done. Well, you best hadn't, then. It'll only cause more trouble. Well, I don't always do what he wants, do I? If you want me to be there, I will. Do you? 
Well, yeah, but... Well, right, well, that's settled then. What time does it start? About half five. Dan ain't gonna like this. Well, he won't know, will he? Not a word, you understand? I'll see you later, love. Come on. Yeah, see ya. Hey, yeah, you're home early, aren't you? Yeah, I thought I'd nip into town and do a bit of uh, Christmas shopping, beat the rush, you know? Well, maybe we could all go. Eh? Get a bite to eat somewhere. No, I've already put your casserole in the oven. Oh, don't mind it, just a thought. Right, well, to be ready in about an hour. I'll see you later, yeah? Yeah. Have a nice time. All to you, sis. You can, of course, just put on your Has he grounded you, then? Eh? Hey. Martin? Oh, yeah, very funny. I think he must be maddling with him. He's a right kill, John. Uh, no reason. He was just tired, that's all. Mm. He had just finished an eight-hour shift in casualty. <laughs> I'd like to see you do that. You have never done a hard day's work in your life. <laughs> now you're even starting to sound like him. Yeah, well, I'd rather that than sound like some spoiled little brat. Oh, charming. Hey, he's here now. Come to spare on you, is he? Get lost, will you? <laughs> what are you doing here? Uh, I came to apologise. I shouldn't have shown you up in front of your mates. No, it was my fault. It all got out of hand. And I suppose I was... Showing off a little bit. Look at me, I live in my flat with my own fella. Yeah, then your fella came home and they all realised what a plonker he was. Mm. But anyway, I thought I'd turn up and give you a bit of support. That's if you're not too embarrassed to be seen with me. Of course I'm not. Good. Only thing is, uh, my mum's coming. I didn't realise Martin would be here. No, I didn't know I was going to be here. Right, well, um, I'll go then. No, no, you're all right. I'll go. Look, it doesn't have to be either or, you know. This is supposed to be about my future. And we're well, both part of that, aren't you? No, she's always been a bright kid, Katie. Me and Ange knew she'd end up at uni. Just always thought we'd be part of it. Helping to pick which one, sorting it all out. So, why don't you go to this grace, didn't you? You know why? She's made a bed, she can lie in it. Anyway, how do you know about that? I mentioned it. He's gone, hasn't he? And you know why? He'll be trying to stop her going to uni so she can stay with him. He wouldn't do that. As if he hadn't messed her life up enough already. Well, we'll see about that. Blame me now. I take it that's for Dad, yeah. You'll need to get top grades if you want to study medicine. It's very competitive. Oh, sometimes I think it'd be easier just to go into nursing. No, if you're capable of more than that. Oh, sorry, Martin, I... No, no, you're right. Look, if I had your brains, that's what I'd have done as well. You've got to go for it, Katie. Otherwise, you'll be letting yourself down. Yeah, but I'm not sure I want to go to uni. I don't want to move away. Well, maybe you won't have to move away. No, your dad's right. You can do medicine at Manchester. Uh, is not my dad. Is my boyfriend. Oh. <sighs> sorry. So this is where you do your Christmas shopping, is it? No wonder you didn't want me to come. No wonder you didn't want us to come. It's bad enough you're lying without getting all pally-pally with him. I didn't even know he was going to be here. Oh, a likely story. Hey, and as for you, don't think you can stop her going to university. He's not trying to stop her. Oh, that's right, take his side. But he isn't. I think maybe you should have this conversation somewhere else. Yeah, you're right, let's go. Why well, should I? I've got as much right to be here as you have. I've got even more right than him. Yeah, well, someone has to show an interest. Because you weren't. You are? You're trying to tell me that I'm neglecting my daughter? Oh, you're really good at this, aren't you? Making a scene in public. You determined to humiliate her or what? Just shut your mouth, Platt, I'll shut it oh, for you. Oh, go on, make her day, why don't you? This bloke, supposed to be me mate. He molested me daughter under my own roof and now he's lecturing Will me. You stop it! You ought to be on one of them registers. You're sick. You're the one that's sick. It's not him that is ruining my life, it's you. I hate you. Go on, why don't you just go? Oh, don't worry. I am. And you, you're coming with me. Who does he think he is, eh? Who? Who do you think? Martin Flaming Platt. Oh, give it a rest, will you, Tommy? Please, I am sick of you griping on about him and Katie. Can't you think about anything else? No. Tell you the truth, I can't. I wake up with it and it's on my mind. Last thing at night before I go to bed, it's there. 
I'm getting stuck into a car engine and it's there. It's like a massive great weight that can't shift off my back. Well, he'll have to shift it because you're making life in this house a nightmare with your carrying on. Me? You're blaming me for what him and our Katie's done to this family? God, heard it all now. Tommy, we've got to get on with it. It's happened. She's living with him. Yeah, which she wouldn't be if you hadn't driven her out of the house. So, yeah, I do blame you for that. But now it's about the rest of us. You, me and Craig. We've got to get on with the rest of our lives. So just let Katie get on with hers. What should I say about? The discovery of penicillin. Mm. Oh, you'll remember that, won't you? What was it like? Hey, cheeky. Not that old. Mm. Although when I see you swatting away at all that school stuff, just bring it home to me. The age gap, that is. Oh, I keep telling you. It doesn't bother me. So it shouldn't bother you. Anyway, in 18 months, I will be done with school forever. Which will be fine by me. I'm dreading going in tomorrow. Everybody will have heard about me dad. Show me up like that and I'm ranting and raving. Calling you a pervert. That won't be the first time he's called it me. I'll just have to live with it, won't I? No, you won't. And neither will I. No, I am never going to forgive him for humiliating me like that. Well, I can kind of understand how he feels. Because he's going to come round eventually and one day you and him are going to kiss and make up. But until then, well, he's still your dad, isn't he? Oh, no. He has done things I can't forget. And I won't forgive. As far as I'm concerned, me and him are finished. I'm never going to speak to him again. Do you know something? You sounded just like your father then. These sandwiches be enough for you. Yeah, plenty. Be something to eat when you get back. All right, mate. You're off to football. Yeah, see ya. Hey, hang on a minute. I'll come and watch. No way, Dad. I don't want showing up. I won't show you up. What are you talking about, show you up? I like did with Kate the other night at school. I heard all about it. See ya. Hey, hang on a minute. What have you been saying to him? Me and nothing. Oh, come on, Tommy. You can't make a scene like that and it not get round. Look, her pervy boyfriend had no right to be there. And you were bang out of order even talking to him. Well, I suppose you knew we were going to be there. I suppose you and our Katie had it all fixed up between you. No, we had no oh, idea... Oh, you were very cosy. I walked in and you and him were talking to the teacher about our Katie's schooling like you were best pals. And what would you have liked me to do, eh? Spit in his eye? Yes. Anything but carry on as if what he's been doing with our Kate is all right, because it's not and it never will be. Well, I'll tell you something. The way you're carrying on, that's not right either, and I'm sick of it. I walked into that school, and the first thing I see is you chatting away to him and our Kate, all smiles. Because I keep family business in the family. That's why. Not like you, going ballistic, washing all our dirty linen in front of all and sundry. You still don't go being friendly with Platt, that's what I'm telling you. I am not talking about Martin Platt. I just care about Katie. Oh, you're saying I don't care? No. Look, maybe you care too much. With you carrying on, you are driving it further and further away from us. Can't you see that? No. When Katie comes to her senses and admits that all she's done is wrong, then she'll be welcomed back into this family. But until then, you stay well away from her. How dare you tell me what to do? Who do you think you are giving me orders? I'm your husband. I'm Katie's dad. And I'm trying to do what's right for this family. There ain't no family no more. It's a one-man band. It's you. Look, I'm telling you, it's down to our Katie now. And as long as she's with Platt, we have nothing to do with her. To hell with you, Tommy. She's my daughter and she always will be. And I'm a just about as much as I can stand of you banging on and telling me what I can and I can't do. Angela, come back here. Angie? Four two, four two, four two, four two, four two, four two. We won, and I scored a goal. Yeah, great. We were all over him. Anyway, I'm starving. What's for tea? I don't know. Ram, Mam, what's for tea? Where is she? She went out. We had a bit of an argument. <laughs> so you ever do these days, innit? You and her argue ever since our Katie went. I'm sick of it. Are you bless your cheek? Look. Why don't you go and get washed up? I'm going to go out for a bit. Have a look round, see if I can find your mother. Ellie, It's Ange! If you're there, let me in! Ellie, Is there? Mum? Mum? What are you doing? What's wrong? Calling on Ellie Cropper, that's all. No, ma'am, I know something's happened. What is it? It's your dad. 
What's he done? Oh, he's not eight years, has he? No, no. I, I don't know what to do with him, but he's banging on about you day in and day out, and I just can't reason with him. I just can't go on like that. I can't. <laughs> just had to get out of the house. I couldn't stand them going on and on. Well, come back to our place. We'll have a cup of tea or something. Yeah, come on, Mum. I mean, he must be out. You can't wander the streets. We could have something to eat. Yeah, that's a good idea. Come on. Angela, what do you think you're doing? Leave her alone. How long's all this been going on behind me back, yeah? Come on, never mind him, you come with us. You're coming home with me right now. I'm telling you straight, there's no two ways about this. You're either with me or you're with them. Tommy, don't say that, she's our daughter. Can't you see what you're doing to her dad? I'm not talking to you. Make your own mind up. You go with these two. Me and you are finished. Can I come with you, love? Yeah, of course you can. Come on, we'll look after you. Andre! Four to two Celsius, that's 36 Fahrenheit. Tomorrow, dry and sunny in the morning, but cloud will thicken in the afternoon. Top temperature, 10 Celsius. Morning. Yeah. Morning. Hey, Mum. Sleep all right? Yeah, yeah, fine. Thanks. There's a uh, tea in the pot. Um, can I get you some toast? No, no, you don't have to do that. It's no trouble. No, no, you're our guest. Can I get you anything else? No, thanks. <laughs> you're not going to school? Yeah, I have plenty of time. Don't nag me, eh? You want some toast? Uh, no, sir. Should eat something, love. Um, I've just said... I'm, right. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. If you want to eat, can I eat? Don't know what to say. Oh. I'll have a slice then with the uh, chocolate spread. Oh, for well, yeah. So, are you going to work? Because you don't have to. Could always take the day off. Hey, well, don't stop turning just because my husband's acting daft. Yeah, well, it's more than daft. It's deranged. You're not going back there. No, you can stay here for as long as you like, can't you? Uh, yeah. No problem. And what about Craig? Oh, yeah, Craig and all. Where's he going to sleep? In the bath? Oh, well, I don't know. We'll sort some out. There's just no way you are going back to that pig-headed bully. Well, thanks for your support, love, but uh, I think that's my decision, isn't it? Yeah, I know, Mum. I think he's learnt his lesson. I doubt it. We'll see. He'll come round. You know your dad. He'll take his time, but he will. He'll come round. Want a cup of tea? It's after 11. What you let me sleep in for? What are you doing here? You should be at school. I'm all worried about you. Yeah, well, don't. I'm all right. Just worry about yourself. Look after number one. Everybody else seems to. You see my boots? No, maybe they're upstairs. Oh, get out of here. What are you playing at? It's got 11 o'clock. Sorry, Kev, I don't know what happened. One minute I'm on the settee watching Rambo 3, next minute I've woke up and half the morning's gone. So maybe it's skill? Uh, yeah, yeah, look, I'm just sorting him out, all right? Look, we've got cars piling up over there. I don't pay yet to keep on the settee. I know, I'm sorry. Look, just give me five minutes, let myself get sorted out and I'll be over here fresh as a daisy. Five minutes? You better go and get your uniform on and I'll write you a letter explaining why you were late. Is Mum coming back? Of course she's coming back. Why shouldn't she come back? Don't be daft. Now come on, go and get changed. Did I see you sneaking out of Martin Platt's flat this morning? I wasn't sneaking. Well, you want to be careful, love. <laughs> Vocal talk. Yeah, folks with big gobs and no brains. Look, I'm sorry. I'm only trying to have a laugh with you. I didn't mean out. I had a row with Tommy and I stopped over at Martin and Katie's. What were you rowing about? What do you think? So have you left him? No, I... No, I would try to knock some sense into his thick skull. And you reckon he's worked? I don't know. 
What are you going to do now? Oh, I don't know. Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't you come in here with me for a drink tonight? There is nothing I like better than getting absolutely laggy on a Monday. I should sort things out with Tommy. And you reckon it's up to you to make the first move, do you? It is always up to me to make the first move. All right? Yeah, slept like a log. Craig, get off to school, OK? Yeah, yeah, he's fine. Thought I might do pasta tonight. Oh, Craig loves his pad ball. No, uh, don't think that's a good idea. Eh? Makes any fancy pizza. Oh, right, well, pizza it is then. Listen, so I'm not mind my own business, but to me it sounded like she wanted to come home. She will come home. Try and make it a bit easier for her. Why would I do that? She's in the wrong. As soon as she realises that, sooner we can get back to normal. How did it go? Do you still want to go for that drink tonight? Have you heard from my mum? No. It's all right, isn't it, if she stays a bit longer? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah of course it is. Well, I just want it all sorted, that's all. Yeah, well, it'd be better if you just up sticks and went back to Sheffield. Left us all on his own. Uh, us? Yeah, me, me mum and Craig. He's a bully. Probably better off without him. No, hang on a minute. Talking about your daddy. Don't you dare stick up for him. If he can't get his own way, then he don't want anyone else to be happy. <laughs> yeah, look. All right, he was angry and upset last night. Well, maybe your mum's right. Maybe he's calmed down today. Mm. Hey, Craig. It's me, mummy. Uh, no, but she was. She stopped last night. Why? She was upset. My dad had upset her. It don't mean she had to stay the night. Yeah, well, she didn't want to go home. And who could blame her with that lunatic waiting for her? You're trying to get her on his side, aren't you? No, the only one taking sides round here is my dad. I've had Ralph's before. She never stops out all night. Well, that just shows you how upset she was then, doesn't it? You're turning her against him, aren't you? She was fed up with him ranting and raving. She just needed to get out. Bet you loved it, her coming round here. When you knew it would drive me dad up the wall. I didn't make her come round. Uh, yeah, I was glad to see it. She's my mum. Yeah, all the same, it must have been worrying for Craig, not knowing where she was. You keep out of this. Craig? It's all your fault anyway. You're a cradle snatcher. And now you split me mum and dad up. Will you hope you're happy? The only one splitting them up is my dad, with his pig-headed attitude. Now, if you don't mind, we're having our tea. Don't worry, I'm going. Cheers, love. Right. Pints, nuts, bags. Everything you need for a husband baiting session. Yeah. Obviously, I haven't got a husband at the minute. Well, not that lives with me anyway. So I'm hoping that after a few of these, we can broaden the discussion out into a full scale attack on men in general. Jen, I'm really not sure I'm up to this. <laughs> Get that down your neck. The hatred will soon begin to flow. No, no, I'm really not in the mood. After the way Tommy's behaved, I am. Men are idle, useless, lying, conniving, Toregs. I see, I think I should get over there right now and try and sort things out. Ugh, you'd make a lousy woman's liver, you, you know. I know. Look, we've both been as daft as each other. We just need to sit down and talk, sort things out. Sorry, mate, if I let the side down. Nah, I'm probably the same. There you go, you see. We're soft. Mum! There you love. Oh, steady, you'll squash me today. You're back for good, then, or is this just a flying visit? That depends. What do you mean? Craig, go on up to your room. I need to talk to your dad. No way, I'm stopping here to mediate. To what? Mediate means being like the ref. If I leave you two on your own, you'll start rowing again. Right, well, we're not going to, so go on, give us ten minutes. He's dead sorry and he's really missed you. Upstairs, now. You were going to pieces. See them? Chips. That's all we eat. Craig! He's a good kid. Yeah, well, they both are. Matter of opinion. Tommy, are we going to talk like adults? Or is Craig right? We're incapable. Sit down, eh? Let's talk. It's not easy, is it? Having a conversation without raising your voice, you mean? Talking, just like that. Feels false. I don't know what to say. An apology would be nice. That's even harder than talking. <laughs> because you're the stubbornest man on the planet. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry I walked out. I drove you away. It just made things worse. 
Yeah, but it's no more than I deserved. I've been rotten to you these past few weeks. Second thoughts, I'm glad I did it. It certainly worked wonders. Look, whatever happens, me and you should stand together. We shouldn't be at each other's throats. You will never know how glad I am to hear you say that. See you on for good, then. Bye, Amy. You took your time. Yeah, well, I went over to my mum and dad's. You what? No, I didn't go in. I don't want to set foot in that place ever again. I just went over to the window to see if I could see what was going on. Yeah? What is going on? Well, she's in there, I could see that. Yeah. You don't approve? Not unless he's begged her first. Well, I can't see that happening. No, me neither. I'll tell you what I can see, though, because I can see it. Well, I've seen it a hundred times before. What's that? Him in the wrong. Knowing he's in the wrong and refusing to back down. So that she backs down to keep peace. Oh, Katie. To your mum and dad. But they're also husband and wife, and I think we should let them get on with this husband and wife bit. On their own. It is the same old story every time. No matter what he does, she always forgives him. It drives me mad. I feel like the mood's changed in here already, like a big cloud's been lifted too. Though. So shall we tell Bugalugs he can come down? He's probably at the top of the stairs anyway. Craig! Come on, mate, you can come down. Love, I just want to be sure that things are going to change around here. Definitely. Because all this anger and hatred, it's getting us nowhere. No. It's pointless. Do you know, one thing I learned being over the road last night, those two are as solid as a rock. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, the last couple of weeks has pushed them close together. Hang on a minute, love. I think we're getting as wise crossed here. I'm still against them two living together. And I don't want you giving the impression that we've accepted it. But I have accepted it. Well, I've not. Far from it. What about what you've just said? I don't want it driving a wedge between me and you. And the best way to show that is for you not to see them. We've got to stand together on this. So nothing's changed? You're still the pig-headed numbskull I walked out on. I'm not giving up my principles just to keep the peace. So, thumping people and ignoring your daughter in the street, these are your principles, are they? It's better not caring. There's nobody cares more about their kids than I do. So why don't you show some moral guidance instead of turning a blind eye? How dare you say that? How dare you? Oh, so what are you going to do then? Walk out again? Great. Well, if anybody's leaving, it's you, not me. Mum! I mean it, Tommy. You're not the only one in this house that makes the rules. The tables are turned. If you can't be civil and start acting like an adult, you can go. You want to be careful what you're saying, Angela. We cannot go on like this. And you obviously can't look after Craig. Who says? Apart from anything, he won't get fed. We did all right, didn't we, mate? Tommy, you've got a choice. You either accept Katie and Martin or you go. What's it going to be? Where are you going? Your mother don't want me here, son. Yes, she does. I do. Mum, talk to him. Dad, please don't go. Please. He'll be back. That's not what he said. But people say all sorts when they're riled. I came back, didn't I? You came and he went. What's the good of that? Look, he'll have a few in the Rovers, he'll calm down and he'll be home. And what if he ain't? Have you got any homework? I said, what if he ain't? He will. He's got nowhere else to go. And he won't leave you if now else. Now, have you got any homework? I've got some science. Right, we'll go upstairs to your room and do it. Because he won't be happy if he gets home and he finds you hadn't. It will be all right, won't it? Of course it will, you dope. And tell me who's off on your holidays. You've not walked out. Satisfied now? Hey, Platt, I'm talking to you. Cool it, Tommy. Don't pretend you can't hear me. I've got nothing to say. OK? No. You said it all to my wife last night, though, didn't you, eh? Well, she came because of Katie. Not because of me. Oh, I'll bet you were glad, though, weren't you? Oh, would you rather? Kicked her down to the street? I bet you were up all night. Telling her it was my fault, not yours. Well, I'll tell you what. You've brought my family up for good and proper now, haven't you? Tommy, I won't have this in here. It's OK, Bev. I'm off. It's going to do you no good, you know. So, where are you going to go now? I don't have a clue. Put you up at ours, mate, but we're a bit short of space. Ah, cheers, mate. That's the least of my problems. Oh, it's you. Oh, sorry, did you think you were him? 
You've heard then? Mm. Martin saw him in the Rovers. Well, come in anyway. Is that all right? I mean, this is the first time I've been here since I left. What if he comes back? Well, what if he does? That's caring. Is that you, John? A little Miss Popular. Come and have a couple of love. Okay. I just thought I'd come see how you were. Not great. So what happened? I came back, we talked, and I thought we were getting somewhere. But then he saw that I'd got no intention of cutting you off. And that were it? Well, I said I wasn't going to leave again, so he did. Do you think he'll be back? Don't know. This is all new territory to me, love. I've got to believe that he will. I don't see why. I think you're better off without him. You don't give up on marriage that easy. Yeah, but there's a limit, isn't there? I mean, how long has this been going on? Him being a pig? Compared to how long I've known him, not long. Seems like forever to me. And what would you know about forever? I've known him longer than you've lived. And when you've been with Martin that long, through thick and thin, not just a few weeks on him, and then you can talk to me about forever. It's going to take more than this to break us up. Right, that's it. Time for bed, come on. I thought you said you were coming back. Clubs don't shut well, eleven. It's not coming and you know it. No, I don't. Kitty knows and all, else why would she have come back? He'd have killed her if he'd have found her here. Well, if he's not back tonight, he'll be here tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow now, is it? Craig, sometimes these things don't get sorted out straight away. And sometimes they don't get sorted out at all. Glen Hardcastle at school, his dad left and never came back. He might spend a night away and then he'll come to his senses like I did. Things look different in the morning. Now, come on, bed. No idea. You know whose fault it'll be if he don't come back, don't you? Yours. Sorry. Have you got any idea where he is? No, sorry, say so don't open up, will you? It's just that Craig's been fretting about him all night. Hey, Kev! Sorry, what are you doing there? Have you been here all night? I had nowhere else to go. You've got home to go to. Look at you, you're in a right state. You should have come home. I'll come home when you see sense about our Katie. If she's part of your life, then I'm not. What about Craig, eh? Is he not in your life either? You're pathetic, Tommy. You're stubborn, pig-headed, pathetic and stupid. Oh dear. Shut it tight on. Hey, your Craig's over there. All right, mate. Good day at school. Are you coming home? I can't. Yes, you can. I can't. You don't understand. Yes, I do. Come on tonight. I'll stay out of the way, please. You can talk to Mum on your own. Look, I'm sorry. No, you're not. Because if you were sorry, you'd come back. I hate this. You not at home. Kate live with Martin. And you and Mum rowing all the time. You say you're sorry. But if you were, you'd stop it. You'd all stop it. Craig! What have you said to him? No. He asked me if I was coming home. And you said no. How could you, Tommy? Upsetting me is one thing, but upsetting Craig. I hope you're proud of yourself. Got to get this sorted out, you know. Oh, no. Look, I just need a few more days. Yeah, well, you can't sleep in the garage, mate. It's not safe. Look, you can keep on our settee just for a couple of days, all right? Well, cheers. Back to work. Eat that breakfast and get off to school. I'm not hungry. Craig, that cost me good money, so get it eaten. Right, I'm going to be late now, so I'll have my wages docked. There'll be less money to feed you and keep this house going. If my dad was still here, he'd be all right for money. Get Willie Dad in here, and I'm not all right for money, so stop arguing with me and get off to school. I feel ill. I'm going to have to stop at home. Oh, don't come that. You're just being awkward. Buck yourself up. I've got enough on my plate without you sulking and whinging. I miss my dad. I know. And it's not you he's fallen out with, it's me. Yeah, well, it doesn't make much of a difference, does it? He's not here whoever he fell out with.
Where's your pals today? They haven't got any. Don't give me that, you've got loads of mates. You're better off with them than hanging around here in your dinner time. I just wanted to see if you were here. I'm not going anywhere, Craig. I'm always going to be around for you, okay? Okay. You better make tracks back to school. Me and Kev are going for a pint of pint. I might see you later. Yeah, see right, I worry about that lad. He seems to think I'm going to vanish. That's why it's handy for me to be over the road at your place. Yeah, well, it can't be comfy. Keeping on our I see, can it? Well, it does me, mate. You and Sally have been really good pals to me, letting me keep down over there. She does know how grateful I am to her, doesn't she? Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course she does. Ah. Hey, up. Yeah. I think that kettle must have boiled by now. All right, mate. Not scarving, are you? Dinner break. How's it going? I'm supposed to say fine. No, you're supposed to tell me how it's going. Rubbish. When are you coming home? I don't know, pal. Oh, Dad! It's complicated. No, it isn't! Katie's shacked up with Martin, you throw a wobbler now, your family's falling apart. It's like Katie's the only one that counts. Don't be such a baby. It's true! Me and my mum not good enough for you. We're half your family! Look, well, if you're gonna hang around, make yourself useful and pass me that brain fluid. Hiya. Oh, you're home. Do you think you can walk in just like that? I've come here for a purpose. What, you mean you haven't come to your senses yet? I will when you will. Well, we're not going to get far with that attitude, are well, it's we? it's your choice. Hardly. Dad, I knew you'd come back. I ain't come back. I'm sorry. Aren't you staying? No. You don't want to? I do. It's not Craig that's stopping me. No one's stopping you. I don't know what you're fighting for. Ask your mother. Don't try and put all this on me. Look, I ain't come here for another row. I've come to tell you that I'm moving my stuff into the flat above streetcars. What? It'll be fine. You can come and see me there. I don't want to. I want you here. It's better if I'm on my own for a while. No, it isn't. Whatever you do, we'll put up with it, won't we, Craig? I'm putting up with it and all, you know. I'll get a key cut. I'll bring it back later. Look, you can come and see me there any time you want, mate. OK? No. I'm sorry, mate. It's cool. Get your books. Craig, if you don't go now, you'll be late. He might come. He won't, because he didn't expect you to be home at lunchtime. And what if he brings the key back and not here? He'll leave it with me. He doesn't want you to have it. <sighs> He'll wait till he sees you, then. And where's he going to see me? Anywhere, in the street, in the garage. He's not there, I've been. Love, he could be having a key cut right now. Where? The cobbler shop in the precinct, the one you pass on the way to school. Oh, yeah? been back yet? No. Well, Kev said he finished work a few minutes ago. Maybe he's dropped the key through the door. Well, he didn't. Look, he said he'd come, so he will. It's all your fault. My fault? If you haven't been to Katie's flat, then my dad still be here. She's my daughter. I've got to see her. No one asked her to leave. She could come back if she wanted, but she'd rather be with Marty. It's not as simple as that. Yes, it is. She don't want us. Why are you bothering with her? Craig. You'd rather be with her than us. No wonder my dad left. On today? Not much. Thought you had football practice on a Friday. Yeah, well, if you know why you're asking. Love, I know things are a bit you hard, but it'll change. Dad just needs some time away. Stop kidding yourself. Morning. Get lost. So with him. All right. Not really. My mum says your dad's moved, didn't he? Yeah, well, we all know whose fault that is, don't we? The perv went after my sister. It's not a perv. We're living in three different houses because of him. At least your dad wants to see you. I ain't seen mine for weeks because of your Katie. Yeah? Yeah. It's not what it used to be, proper nights and stuff. 
was obsessed with her. We still weren't together. We could go back to the way it was. Yeah, well that's not going to happen, is it? No. Unless we help them out. In what? If you wanted to split someone up, what would you do? He's left home. What, for good? Apparently. Hmm. Who's your Craig taking it? Angry. At me, mainly. Reckons it's all my fault. Well, has to blame someone, hasn't he? I remember when I left Gail, I hit David harder than anyone. Yeah, well, I'm fed up of it. I'm fed up of arguing and fighting and us getting blamed for everything. Yeah, but when your man gets wound up, it's only because she cares about you. Yeah, well, you could have fought me. Oh. We are down in the dumps today, aren't we? What I need is an afternoon out with my man, followed by an eat as much as you like, mm. Chinese for seven quid. Is that me? Yeah. <laughs> That's just what I was thinking. Right, I'll get my coat. Okay. Dad, you've got to come to ours now. Okay, I'll go out for a meal. No, you've got to come quick. Come on, she needs you. Oh, no. Okay, quick I'm going now. out together. Oh, Matty, what? I thought we were going out. <sighs> Hiya. How's Gail? She's fine. Turns out David was being a little bit over dramatic. The sink was flooded. Anyway, I've sorted it for her now. Well, why couldn't you just ring a plumber like anyone else? Hey, don't get the wrong idea, eh? Only went round there because David gave me the impression it was an emergency. Yeah. Well, your family has to come first. Hang about. There's nothing going on between me and Gail, if that's what you're worried about. Martin, she flutters her eyelashes and you, you drop everything, including me. And you run round there like a shot. <sighs> we were supposed to be going out. All right. Well, we'll go out tomorrow. Well, no, I can't because I'll have homework. Just forget it. Uh, Hello, Cray. We taking you to the match? Uh, no, I'm not playing. Oh, why not? I, I, I don't know. I'm borrowing his shin pads. And hatching plans. Eh? What is it? Tactics and strategy for the match? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad I'm not the opposition. It's okay then. Yeah, leave it to me. Well, here we are, sir. Hey, yep. So, listen. Well, just a little something to say sorry for being crabby. Especially when we've got the full day to ourselves for a change. Hmm. Look, croissants and marmalade. Didn't they have sausage, egg, and bacon down the shop? You what? What is wrong with this? Nothing, nothing. It's lovely. I'm winding you up. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, of course I was. Well, you know, I don't like a fry up when we've got now else better to do than relax and feel the cholesterol coursing through our veins. No, no, this is, uh, it's nice. I can do you a fry up. Oh, I'll not be daft. Go on, put the kettle on. <laughs> or is that a uh, double espresso? Uh -huh, very <laughs> Hello. Hi, David. When? <laughs> now? I don't think so, mate. Yeah, I know I did. I know the trials are very important. <sighs> right, OK. I'll be there in five minutes. All right? Bye. What? Well, it's David. And? Well, he's got this football match this morning and it includes the trials for the district and... Well, I said I'd be there when it happened. Gail can go. Well, apparently she can't. <sighs> yeah. I know, I know, and I'm sorry, but... Well, on the other hand, it's the first chance we've had for some quality time together for ages. I've got to take every opening I can get nowadays. Come on, he wants me support at this match. I can't turn him down now, can I? No, no, you go. Oh, great. <laughs> don't matter. You weren't that keen on your breakfast anyway. Yeah, I was. Oh, yeah, yeah. Shadow your flask. Uh, no, no thanks. I better get off. But I'll be back soon. Oh, when? Not long. Oh, hiya, mate. See so you got your keys then. Oh, time is it? Half eleven. 
What are you doing? Opening the window, it stinks. Does it? Must have dozed off. Hey, don't worry about that, I'll sort that out. It's all right. I'll tell you what, do you want to do me a favour? Stick the kettle on, eh? There's a good lad. Saturday night. You had a game of football this morning, didn't you? Yeah. How'd you go on? I was supposed to go and watch, weren't I? You said you would, yeah. I'm sorry, Paul. It's alright, Dad. There'll be other games. I'll definitely come next time, yeah? Angela! Um, I didn't want to say out in there, but has Tommy moved out? Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry after everything you've been through. <laughs> Tell me about it. Well, I I'm sure you'll sort things out. Well, I'm not so sure, really. We've uh, had us ups and downs, but this time we've hit rock bottom. I wouldn't be surprised if this were the end of us. All right. Yeah. <sighs> well, come on, then. What? What's your problem? I haven't got one. You so have. No, I haven't. No, you so have. Martin, out. I haven't got a problem. Mm. Fine. You said Gail weren't going. Yeah. Well, that's what David told me. So he was lying? Why would he lie? Well, I suppose he was lying, no. Probably just made a mistake. Oh, well, handy mistake, then. How do you mean? Handy. So that you and Gail could both go to the game. Nice, was it, your little family again? Well, yeah. It was nice, as it happens. It was nice to watch me kid and be on good terms with him. It was also nice to relax in the company of another adult. Oh, well, good. Are you seeing her again, then? Oh, don't be ridiculous. How ridiculous? Cos <laughs> from where I'm sitting, it is obvious that you, you'd rather spend time with your ex-wife and not me. Oh, well, if that's what you think, then you think it. Where are you going? I wasn't joking when I said I enjoyed the company of other adults. I'm going to go and find some more. Down the pub. Are you getting divorced? What? Are you splitting up for good? What are you on about? Is your marriage over? Craig, I don't know what you're talking about. Do you love me, ma'am? Where's this coming from? Craig! Craig! You can get through this. I'm not so sure. Of course you can. Look, when me and Roy went through our country, Tom, it was you that I was thinking of. Me? Yeah, and everything that you've been through. I thought if Angela can do it, so can I. You and me role model. Very. Never been one of them before. Ellie, I'm flattered, but you're wrong. Surely not. Yeah, we went through Ellen and I water, but that was serious. Our it, lives were at stake. Exactly. So if you could get through that... Well, you'd think so, wouldn't you? But that's not the point. This is so silly, so... so minor, so petty, that it trivialises everything that we went through. It makes a mockery of the strength we had to deal with it all. This is just about proving a stupid point. I love my husband, the hero. But I don't love my husband, the... The petty, selfish, spiteful bigot. See you, man. Bye, Lobby. You should have seen look on your Katie's face when she realised they got that match together. She was well now. So you reckon the plan to get her jealous is working then? Yeah, but her and my dad have been arguing all night. <sighs> Good. The sooner we split them up, the better, before my parents start talking divorce. So are you going to talk to me or what? Well, we could have talked yesterday, if you hadn't matched out to the pub. Yeah, well, I thought we both needed some space, that's all. It was both time to cool down. What, and me time to see the error of my ways? Well, now you come to mention it. Look, there is nothing going on between me and Gail, apart from parenthood. Sometimes it's nice for David to spend some time with the pair of us, instead of always having to take turns. Oh, but it's all right for me to take turns with them. Make up for it tonight, shall we go out for a meal or something? What? You ain't got some other pressing family engagement? I won't, I promise. Just me and you and some quality time. Hey, what do you say? I'll believe it when it happens. Hey, what the hell are you doing here? I think you could get a part. Keep your head on, I've got it. Oh, so you thought you'd just down a few on the way back? One pint, that's all I've had. Yeah, well, have it in your own time, not mine. Right. Satisfied now. 
No, it's just hard, that's all. I was having to take second place. Ah, but not always. Because Davy wanted me to take him to the pictures tonight. I know, I know. What, I said no. Taking my gorgeous girlfriend down for a meal. Really? Well, I didn't quite put it like that, but, uh, well, yeah. Come here, come here. At least I hope I am. Yeah, well, I might be persuaded. <laughs> I'll get rid of him. Hello! Dad, something's happened. I need to speak to you. It's an emergency. Oh, really? You seem to have a lot of them at your house. Yeah. So, come on. What is it this time? It's private. Hey! Don't be daft. No, no, it's all right. Don't mind me. We'll go get changed. Well, come on, then. This had better be good. I wouldn't exactly say that. Sarah's pregnant. She's pregnant? Yeah, and I don't think Mum wants it broadcasting. I don't think Sarah does anyway, for that matter. Look, she's in a right state. She's crying in all sorts. Can you come round? Um, yeah. yeah, okay. Uh, Katie? Okay. I'm gonna have to go round. Eh? Hey. A bit of a family crisis. Like what? Well, I can't talk about it yet, but listen, I'll be back as soon as I can. In fact, by the time you change, I'll be back, I promise. I'll tell you what, I'll knock off in a minute and we'll go and get a pizza. How come? No chance. You've got this car to finish. Hey, I'll stay if you like. No, you won't. We're going on. Don't forget to lock up. Great. It's all right, Dad. I'll give you a hand. No, you've got better things to be doing. No, I haven't. Anyway, I enjoy helping you out. We used to do a lot of that, didn't we? All them second-hand wrecks we managed to keep going. Saved a fortune. Mum didn't see it that way. No. Other people have got gardens. Me, I've got a scrapyard. <laughs> right. Passes that brake pipe spanner. Let's get on with it. We're busy. Tough. Well, this is all very cosy. Katie, what are you doing here? Well, I got bored with waiting, so I thought I'd come and get you myself. Yeah, OK, all right, all right. I'll be back as soon as I can, OK? Did he tell you we were supposed to be going out? No, I'm sorry he didn't. Yeah. I'm sure about that, are you? Only I thought that's maybe why you sent David round. I mean, we've had the flood and the football match. What's the excuse this Hey! Time? That's enough. Look, I didn't even know David had gone round, and I certainly didn't send it. Yeah, right. Hey, I'm not having this. Look, Gail's got enough on her plate without you coming round here sounding off. I'm really sorry about it. What are you apologising to her for? Well, it's me you're supposed to be taking out. Look, you just go, Martin. It's okay. No, I'll go when I'm ready, thanks very much. Not because she's having a tantrum. You know what? Forget it. You're welcome to him. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? That I've had enough. I gave up my fam my family for you. I've had to watch my parents split up over it, and my dad treat me like some stranger. Do you think that has been easy? Oh no, no, but so you! You can't even give up a night with your family. Well, fine. Move back in with him. Do what you like, because I can't take any more. We're finished. Katie. Look, you'll have to calm down, because I just can't understand what you're telling me. I've left, Martin. What do you mean you've left him? What do you think I mean? I've probably done my favours in as I'd rather be with his ex-wife. Gail! Yeah, Gail! If I can't keep away from it, then fine, you can go back and live with her for all I care. You've done mine? Oh, go away, Craig. For good? We don't know yet. Yeah, for good, all right! Seriously? Leave it, Craig. Hey, I didn't mean go out. You've got homework to do. We'll do it after. Look, are you absolutely sure that there's something going on? Because it don't ring true to me. What is it to you? We're finished. You've got what you wanted. Congratulations. Here he is, the main man. You better see your cater. We're a in history. Yeah, I know. We're there. Uh, we did it, mate. Put it there. You can tell me daddy can move his stuff back in. All right. If you think Katie's up there, you're out of luck. Yeah? Well, I'll see for myself if it's all the same with you. 
I'm telling you, she's at home and don't bother going round because she don't want to see you. Hey, it's my dad you're talking to. Hey, come here. What did Platt say to you? You never guess what, Dad. She stumped him. Who says? She did. She's at home with Mum now. And she told me there's no way she's getting back with him. What did she say? Ask her. Then you can bring your stuff round. When I've seen it with my own eyes, then I'll believe it. Bet come in. I don't want to talk to you. Katie, I'm really sorry if I got called away. Yeah, you said. I still don't want to talk to you. Let him speak, love. You had a family crisis. Well, yeah. Oh, and it couldn't have been helped. Well... Only, when you say family, what you really mean is Gail. Gail crisis. Oh, Katie... Crisis meaning that she could deal with it herself, only she fancied a bit of company. No, it wasn't like that. Because she likes the power, doesn't she? Plus, every time that she calls for you, you lap it up. Oh, it wasn't just about Gail. Well, what was it about, then? Because it wasn't David, he brought the message. Nick can look after himself. Sarah don't even talk to her, ma'am. So who does that leave her? Uh, duh, let me think. Don't mind me. Look, let's just go back to the flat and talk in private. Come on, Katie. Fine. But it's you who's got to do the talking. And it better be good. Now, there's no reason why my dad can't come home. Well, it didn't look that happy. He's been waiting for this a long time, hasn't he? He won't have sunk in yet. Hey, have you seen this? What's all that about? How should I know? So we're going to get the rest of her stuff. Katie, what are you doing with him? Get him off, Chris! But she dumped him. Well, it didn't look like they were together. They're together, all right. I've just told me dad to split up. What do you want me to do about it? Go find out what's going on. Well, let's wait and see what happens first. No, tonight. My dad's got to know. You must know what's happening with Martin. How do you work that one out? Gossip. You're a barmaid. It's part of the job. Uh, no, love. Drinks and snacks. That's me. I wonder uh, the odd ray of sunshine if you're lucky. I think I might be. Well, I'm waiting. Look, I promise not to say anything. Oh, you promised Gail. Oh, Katie. The only word for this is jealousy. Yeah, well, maybe I am jealous. But maybe she knows what she's doing and all. And what does that mean? Well, maybe she's trying to make me jealous to split us up so that you'll be free to go back to her. <laughs> what are you laughing for? Katie, if you knew anything about me and Gail, you'd be having a good chuckle and all. Trust me. Go back. Yeah, well, I don't know anything, do I? I never had a family with her for a kick-off. Yeah, well, count yourself lucky. Are you slagging her off? You know, that's what blokes do when they try and hide the feelings. Oh, yeah. Well, they'll be playing that game. People only get suspicious when they're guilty themselves. <laughs> No, Martin. I get suspicious when there is something you are not telling me. You want what? <sighs> yeah, all right. All right, come up. It's David. Oh, tell him to bring his man round the more the merrier. Oh, knock it off, Will. Oh, yeah, it is that easy! All right, what is it you wanted, mate? Um, I just... Looking for a book that I thought I left, that's all. Uh, what book? No, I must have left it at school. Is everything okay then? Yes, thanks. Right, you're sorted then? Yep. Okay. Alright, mate. See you in a bit. Well, sorry about that. Don't be. And everything is not okay. Oh, Katie, come on. We're getting it from all sides here. Eh? What are we doing fighting about it? When my dad fell out with my mum, I told you. Yeah? When he walked out on it, I told you. Whatever happens, Martin, I always tell you. Katie, not everything in my life is about us, OK? And if you can't understand that, you've got a lot more growing up to do than I realised. What's she say? She's not back with me, is she? She says she is, yeah? What are you doing? She can't do this. I'll leave her. You're gonna make me? Hey, hey, pack it in. You spoke to our Katie? No. You are hiding something from me. She's not split up with him. I got it wrong. You just built me up, so didn't you? You're flaming useless. Shit. It's not my fault, Dad. Just get out of my sight, Craig. What are you looking at? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't want to hear any more. 
Well, fine. Go and hide in the rovers like me dad. Oh, well, I would. But according to you, my ex-wife's likely to pounce on me. Oh, you know? this is what I really hate. Yeah, it's a real science split that I feel threatened, Martin. Yeah, because it's so flaming ridiculous. Yeah, well, I bet you never laughed at Gail when she was suspicious of you. Hey? When she thought you were sleeping with that nurse from work. Only it turned out... Oh, you were. And what's that got to do with anything? Well, you've done it before. But you expect me to trust you just like that? Well, this has got nothing to do with that. But you won't prove it to me. What are you hiding from me, Martin? All right, then. All right, you want to know the truth. I'll tell you the truth, OK? Sarah is pregnant. All right? Are you happy now? Is that it? Yes, that's it. We're keeping it quiet till she decides what to do so there's no big dark secret. There's no reason not to trust me, all right? But who would I have told? Did you think I'd spread it around? Gail swore me to see. Oh, yeah, because she thinks I'm a gobby kid. I didn't realise you didn't all. No, but I don't. Oh, I know what you see me now. You think you can just palm me off with whatever suits you. You'd rather see me angry than tell me the all truth. All right, Katie, all right, I was wrong. I've told you why I did it. I've apologised. Is that not enough? No. Maybe that is how Gail treated you when you were a toy boy. But it is not good enough for me. Uh, what are you doing? I'm moving out. Katie! Katie! Hey! Come here a sec. Look, uh, sorry about yesterday. I was a bit harsh. Hey, Tommy, what are you playing at? It's ready. Look, I actually have finished this last night. It's a good customer game. It takes as long as it takes. Look, I'll have a word with you. What you stink of it. Did you have another session last night? What's it got to do with you? <laughs> if you're keeping the customers waiting, everything to do with me. Look, I've just told you, Kev, I'll square hey, it with no, you. No, not spelling like that, you won't. And don't drive any of our cars. Not till you sweat some of it out of you. What are you gawping at? No. Get to school. Thought I heard you. Don't you want to know where I've been? What do you want to tell me? Just at mates. Why didn't you look for me? And what? Drag you back by your hair, stop your pocket money. Not your dad. It was you treating me like a kid, keeping secrets. Yeah, with good reason. You knew I had a family when we got together. Why are you being like this? I've come to sort it out. Yeah. Don't you want me back? Well, you walked out. Hmm? Don't want to just ignore that. Just go back to how it was ten minutes before the row. I'm sorry we argued, and I'm sorry if I overreacted. Yeah, you did. I missed you. I hate being apart, and that's the first night we haven't spent together since I left home. Yeah, I do now. Don't, don't be angry with me. Come on, let's just make up. Might as well, uh, when we've got your clothes off. No, 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 you're not listening. Oh, it's not that easy. Look, I thought you were mature enough to cope with our relationship. And my family and this age thing. I am. We had an argument, that's all. Yeah, one tiff, one tiff, and you head for that door. But there's people out there hate me because I'm with you. But no, I'll put up with it because I thought this was the most important relationship of my life. Not some dramatic teenage fling with storming out and shouting. But it's not like that. It's real. I love you. Yeah. I love you. Maybe that's not enough. What, you you want to end it? Well, I want you to think about why you walked out of that door. And I want you to be sure that this is what you want. I am. No. Now go to school. Think about it. I'll be here. No, I don't need to think about yeah, it. you do. You look like death warmed up. You look the same as ever. Oh, you silver tongued devil. What's up with you? Bit of a thick head. Thanks to change from a pig head. Have you come here just to take a mickey or do you want some it? No, I'm keeping talking. Like they say to do, you know, when your marriage breaks down. <laughs> yeah, well, your mother's been on. 
I'm running out of excuses. What do you want me to tell her? Oh, tell her what you want. No, tell her the truth. Tommy, ain't you had enough of this? Come on, you daft beggar. Are you going to stop seeing Katie? No. Then I'm not coming home. Not yet. Not yet. I said not yet. Hey, what's up? You'll live. Go and run them under the tap. It's got to stop, Tommy. What? It's an accident. No, it wasn't. It's you. You're getting sloppy. Where's that coming from? Job's not finished on time. Tools left lying around. Shortcut. Poor timekeeper. Oi, I was on the dot this morning. Yeah, and you were still half cut when you got here from last night. That's rubbish. Well, I know you'll be off to chop yourself up again in your dinner hour. Oh, dinner hour and a half. Not good enough, mate. It's got to stop. My drinking's got nothing to do with you. Final warning. Sort yourself out. Yes, lads. Uh, three hot pots, please, chef. Sorry? Oh, pint, please, Kev. Tommy? Let me know, please. And, uh, pint for me as well, please. Okay, love. You don't want to fool yourself. I'm not fooling no one. I fancied a lemonade before, now I fancy a pint. I'll have another one in this show when you're ready. Okay. Still going out with her. Oh, no, you're kidding. Just asked it. Dirty old perv. Hey, you still me dad. How could you think I'd leave you? Oh, maybe it had something to do with you walking out. Ah, oh, yeah, no, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have left. I promise I will never do it again. Now, uh, let's go to bed. No, talk first. <sighs> Come on. You didn't really think I'd leave you for good, did you? David asked me if we'd split up before. And I told him we were going to be together a long time. Mm -hmm. But you were so cold this morning, I thought I'd ruined everything. Yeah, I know, I'm sorry too. But you must see how difficult it is for me, juggling you and my family. Hey, that doesn't mean to say you're not the most important thing in my life. You know that, don't you? Are you going to turn me down three times in one day? Or are we going to bed? That service needs finishing from five o'clock, no later, all right? Yeah, all right. What are you after? Can you lend us a quid? Lend, give more light. All right, then. Where's the van? It's in the garage. Hi, what's up? What's up is, I pulled over because the steering was dodgy and all the wheel nuts had come off. I was just about to go on the M6. I could have been killed. You're kidding. You forgot to take the wheel nuts, didn't you, you idiot? I'm lucky to be alive. There's no way I'd make a mistake like that. You remember typing them? It's a beginner's mistake. Do you remember? I had you in one of you telling me to hurry up. Ah, Craig and other are talking to me. Oh, so whose fault was it? Mine or Craig's? You did the job. Your responsibility. Look, I know this looks bad. No, it doesn't look bad. It is bad. You could have killed him. Anybody can make a mistake. No, not like that. I'm sorry, Tom. You've had your warning. That's it. You what? Get your stuff. Get out of my garage. You're fired. I'm going to get one of them silver trees. I've seen them in the arcade. Dad hates artificial trees. Well, let him get a real one for his little flat. See how he likes it, clearing up the needles two days before Christmas till the end of February. He won't be able to afford a tree. Great, nobody asked him to spend all his earnings on booze. Yeah, but he won't be earning anything now. Kev sacked him. Oh, another Christmas tradition. Your dad gets himself sacked. Well, at least that ray of sunshine won't be around to ruin our Christmas celebrations. It's not but a joke to you, is it? No, love, it's just the way he's been behaving. It's no wonder that Kevin's had enough. It's you ganging up against him with Katie. That's what's done it. It's not me dad's fault. I've tried for weeks to make him see sense. It's not my fault he's so pig-headed. Oh, and you are just like him. Don't just stand there. You can help, you know. He's like his dad. Likes to watch other people do the work. My dad's a grafter. He's proud of that. Hey, he's just kidding. How come you're not school anyway? What's that got to do with you? Sounds like charm school he needs to go to, not Weatherfield High. Thought you and my dad's mate, and then you go and sack him. Did he send you? No. He'd go ballistic if he knew I was wagging school. You do know why he sacked him? He's a good mechanic. He's better than him. <laughs> Look, your dad could have killed one of my customers. I had no choice. Last Christmas were horrible. 
but at least we're all together. In me, man, me and our Katie. Hey, don't make me feel like Scrooge. This is down to him, not me. It's him you should be talking to. He won't listen to any of us. Hey, he's a good mechanic, Tommy. He'll walk into another job, no problems. But he'll need this. Okay, I'll tell you what, Craig. Why don't you go and drop them off at home? And then tie it home and I'll take you to school. <laughs> Rubbish mechanic, am I? But I'll do as your chauffeur. Come on. You and her will make it up. Well, you've got more confidence than I have. Actually, I was wondering whether to invite Martin and Katie. Oh, I was wondering the same thing, seeing as Tommy don't look like being there. Hey, ladies, should I crack open a bottle of gin? Really gets us into the spirit <laughs> of things. <laughs> don't I feel bad enough as it is? Apparently, Kevin sacked Tommy again. I mean, Craig had a row about it this morning. Look, rather than you and me fall out about who's going to invite Martin and Katie. Why don't you and Craig come to me as well? I mean, that'll solve all our problems. Well, most of them. Are you sure? Well, what's the alternative? Me, me man and David in our house, you and Craig in yours, and Martin and Katie in that flat. Well, if you put it like that, I, Craig could help David do the washing up. <laughs> <laughs> Great! So, now all we've got to sort out is you and Kieran. I know. Martha, don't worry about us. I think hearing you two talk about your family politics, I'm glad we're on our own. Oh, she's got a point. Should we gate crash her flat, leave the rest of them to sort themselves out? <laughs> Here's a pint. And how are you today, Tommy? Unemployed. No, that's a real shame, but it's um, not a problem for in here, is it? Got some funny values you lot round here, haven't you? One mate turns out to be a kiddie fiddler, next minute he's run off with me daughter, another one pretends to be sympathetic, offers me a bed, and the next minute he sacks me after one mistake. Talk about kick a man when he's down. And maybe you should do yourself a favour by leaving that point and going and getting yourself a job. Listen, I can't get a job. Shall I tell you why? Because him over there won't give me a reference. I'll give you a reference any time, Tommy. When you sober up. I ain't got a drink problem. I've got a wife problem, a daughter problem, I've not got a job problem. Somebody throw him a life belt before he drowns in self-pity. Oh, get stuffed a lot of you. Hey, at least he left his pint. We could get someone to ring up. Tell them a nurse we've seen at work. Our kid would be so jealous. <laughs> what, are you going to bother our his voice? Well, if you've got any better ideas. Oh, yeah, I see we leave them to it. I like it when my dad's happy. And I don't like it when mine's unhappy. Oh, we've bust them up before. We should hit them again while they're wobbly. <coughs> like you. Hey! Break his arm, not be able to do his own work. <laughs> Go on, Greg, break it. <laughs> <laughs> have you been home yet? Me mum's still at work. Oh, so she won't have told you that you're having your Christmas dinner with us then? Eh? Yeah. Me, David, maybe Nick, you and your mum. And I'm going to ask Martin and Katie as well. Did you say that about me dad? No, but he's very welcome if he wants to come. <laughs> and how weird's that going to be? Me mum, me dad, his girlfriend. Me brother, no sister, your sister. Am I going to work out who sits where? <sighs> Not be checking you back this time, then. You said you were a great mechanic, Dad. So did Tyrone. Just an excuse to save money. Work dries up this time of year anyway. You could get a new job. Somewhere better than that ming little dump. You're as bad as them. I've got things to sort out. It's not a job I need. Well, you don't need another, Dad. I do. What have you had for tea? I could get us some fish and chips. Not hungry. Mum's sorting out Christmas. Once you're home. Just shake. Honest. Come on, Dad, we'll have a great time if you're back. You're better off without me. I'm going out and get some more cans. I'll go. It won't serve you. See you later. It might be pathetic compared to over the road, but do you fancy going for our tree tomorrow? No. Fancy going to see me Dad? No. Why don't you ask me whether I wanted to go next door for Christmas? Oh, you've heard. David's mum told me. And what if Dad wants to come home? That'll just drive him off again. Well, if he comes home, maybe things will change. He'll come home if you ask him to. I am not going to ask him. It were his choice. Do you remember when Dad said Katie had made her choice? So she could get lost. You called him pig-headed. 
Now you're saying exactly the same thing. It's choice. Well, it is. At least Katie's happy. My dad's going to pieces. He's drunk all the time and he reckons everyone hates him. Well, he's drunk, everybody does. So that's it. Just wash your hands of him. Have a Merry Christmas next door with that lot and leave me dad to rot. Why is it always my fault? I'm the only one trying to keep this family together. Everybody else just wants to fight. You all right? I'm going. What do you mean? I'm moving in with my dad. You're doing no such thing. You can't stop me, Mum. And what are you going to do? Walk through me? If I have to. No, you're just like your father. If you don't get what you want, use brute force. You're not better. You can't talk me out of going, so you're going to stand in my way. Well, it's not going to work. You might have given up on him, but I haven't. Morning. All right, mate. Do you sleep all right? Yeah. It's on a hand. Did I ever give you one to tidy your room? You give me the back of your hand for not tidying it. Exactly. It's my mess, I'll sort it out. You go and have a wash. Okay. Hey, Craig. What? Do you fancy going out later? Just the two of us. Oh, yeah. Nice one, Dad. Look who's come to see us. Hey, Ange. Come and sit down. I've just made a pot of tea. I'll tell you what, I'll pour you one. I'm not stopping. Are you working today? I've just come for Craig. Get your bag, look. He hasn't finished his breakfast yet. Right, I'll have a cup of while he's finishing it and then we're going home. I'm not going home, Mummy. You are? I'm not. OK, you've made your point. You've had your sleepover. Now, get your stuff. It's not a sleepover. I've moved out. And Mother makes one. You're all on your own. It's going to be lonely this Christmas. Oh, unless you invite your old mate the child catch you around. <laughs> You're not stopping here. He's got as much right to be with his dad as he has his mum. Now, if you don't mind, we've got his breakfast to finish. And then we're off out to watch the Manchester Derby, aren't we, mate? Yeah. In fact, we've got the whole weekend planned. We might even drive over to Ellen Road and watch Leeds. We'll get tickets. Against Fulham. It's on the telly. No problems. So that's our plans. What have you got to offer? So you're going to bribe him to spend the weekend with you, are you? It'll be more than a weekend. He can stay as long as he likes, as far as I'm concerned. Right, well, fine. Well, enjoy your little holiday, Craig, but when you want feeding properly and your clothes need washing and ironing... Oh, hang on a minute! ...picking up after him and waiting on him... Oh, just shut up a minute and listen, will you? Can you hear that? Can you? Do you know what it is? The washing machine. How's your breakfast, Craig? Very nice. Think I can't look after me own son? No, I think he can't look after you and that's why he's here, you know? No, I'll tell you why he's here. Because he's sick of you giving Katie and the cradle snatcher the time of day. Isn't that right, mate? Yeah. Right, fine, fine. I ain't going to argue with you. You know where I am when you want me, and I do mean when. You can see yourself out, can't you? Did you ever tell you I was proud of you? No, never. Nah, neither did my dad. And it didn't do me any harm, but you know what I'm trying to tell you, don't you? She needs teaching a lesson. You'll do for me, son. Just because something seems inevitable, you don't give up on it. Well, that's what your mother's done. Hey, up. All right, Les. What are you two doing here? You're Sheffield lads, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. You're not neutral, are you? Anybody but United, mate. Just like the rest of the country. Good man. Good man. We're going to give him a right tonking today. Come on, you blues. <laughs> your mother knows that our Katie and the other fella are out of order. She thinks there's nothing we can do about it, so she's given up. I accepted the inevitable. But there's nothing inevitable in this world, Craig. Just take a look around you. There's not one person in this room thinks that there's such thing as a foregone conclusion. You stick to your guns and you don't give up. You'll win in the end. Same again. No, thanks. Hey, hey, here. Yeah. We're showing last year's goals to get us in the move. Come on, you blues. Come on. What can I get you, love? Tell me our first, darling. Let them wait. You ain't kicked off yet. It will do if we miss Gary Neville's moment of magic. Now give us happy moments. I'm serving a customer. Get it turned on. Buy a light, please, love. I'm going to look after Craig. Might help him get his act together. Well, he won't be able to hit the grog as much. Yeah. No worry. They'll be back home soon. I'd be glad at peace and quiet myself. 
don't be buying me any rubbish, none of them jumpers will be. Teddy bears on the yeah, ground. Right. No rubbish. <laughs> Here's a fiver. Fancy another? Let's just go out for dinner. We can have a dinner in the pub. We've been in the pub since half eleven. Yeah, I know, and whose fault is that, eh? It's not the fans who pick these stupid kickoff times. But we're out in a session now, Craig. Me and you, dad and lad together, so come on. Don't get giddy. Can't be too big. Never fit in the car, will it? Mm. Oh, and we need decorations for it now while we're out. Oh, yes, darling. Beverly! Expensive. Tommy. I was just wondering what your policy on admitting children was. But then I saw Martin bring his in, so I thought I'd bring our Craig in. Ah, ignore him. I don't want any trouble, Tommy. There won't be no trouble, will there? Well, there won't be from me, mate. You don't like picking up people his own size. What do you want? I'll have a pint of lager, a uh, packet of crisps and orange juice for the kids. What flavour do you want, Katie? I want no of you. Oh, come on. We'll go in. No! Oh, come on, just got my drink. Oh, come on. We've got a nice treat to buy. Oh, that's cosy. Yeah, well, we'll have a better Christmas than you do, you loser. Do you know what he bought his last bird for Christmas, Bev? I don't want to know. A selection box. <laughs> What's your problem, Tommy? Come on, lads. Hey, what is your Come problem? On, lads, lads, lads. Hey, my relationship outlasting yours, is it? It won't Come last on. much longer. No, you've lost your house, your job, Mate. your wife, your daughter. And you're a nonce. Yeah? You haven't got much left, have you? Come on, Katie. We're going. I ought to kill you for what you've done to my family. We love each other, Tommy. You've lost. Live with it. Never. Never. It would be easy to give in. But you don't do the easy thing. You do the right thing. Why should we accept what is plain wrong? Cradle-snatching perverts should be locked up. Shall I put the radio on? See how Wednesday are doing. It's got to be nearly half time by now. If you like. Are you going to be all right driving to Eleanor tomorrow? It's on the telly. We could watch it in the Weatherfield Arms, eh? To be honest, Dad, I've gone off Leeds a bit. Oh, hang on, hang on. I, I know they've had their problems and they might not be in the Champions League these days, but you've made your bed, you've got to lie in it. Just because now we live in Manchester, you don't go following all the other glory hunting sheep. I wouldn't do that. Got to take the rough with a smooth in this life, kid. I was thinking about going back to support Wednesday. Like you. Seriously? Well, yeah. It's where I was born and it just feels like the right thing to do. Come here. Come here, come and sit down. You're one in a million, you are, do you know that, eh? One in a million. Where would I be without you? I tell you what, go and stick that radio on, see if we can find out the score, eh? <laughs> it feels like the prodigal son's come home and that's cause for a celebration. Come on, a Wednesday! <laughs> Hiya. Hey, that's a big tree. Hey, biggest one we can fit in car. So I've just been to see Dad. Uh, no, there's no one in. He must have taken Craig out for the day. Oh, we'll be out by now. Prezzy's probably. Mm -hmm. We saw him earlier. Mouthing off, as usual. Has uh, Gail invited you for your Christmas dinner yet? No. Oh, well, she will do. She's inviting me and all. It'd be nice if you could come. Well, it'd be nice if we could have her at our house, but uh, neutral territory's best there this year. Okay, love, I'll see ya. Bye. Bye. Yeah, yeah. Bye. Yeah, Have you got a problem with going around to Gales at Christmas? Well, I'd rather spend the day on our own. Well, yeah, so would I. No, you wouldn't. Yeah, I would. Look, you you want to see David? You're bound to. Yeah, I know. Martin, it's fine. I haven't got a problem with going to Gales for Christmas. Good. <laughs> right, you get the fairy lights out. 
and I'll go and lock the car. I just wanted to say, all that trouble with your dad before. Well, I'm sorry. You will be. Sleep. You cold? Yeah, a bit. Come here. Come and sit down here. Oh. Oh. Don't remember going to bed. Did you? Yeah. Ooh. Shouldn't have to do that. What kind of dad am I that gets killed and has to have his own son put into bed? Your mother's probably right. You're better off at home with her. No. I want to be here with you. Even after I messed up your weekend. You didn't mess it up. Martin did. Hmm. Well rubbed my nose in it, didn't he? Gloating over all the damage he's done. If he weren't here, everything would be all right. It'd all be back to normal. Yeah. We don't be spending Christmas together like a proper family should. It's all down to him, this mess. I'd do anything for you, Dad. You know that, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Come here. Has Craig gone already? Um, no, he's stopping at his dad's actually. You can call from there. It's all right, I'll meet him at bus stop. All right. What a nice story. Eh? Yeah. Oh, um, by the way, I mentioned to Martin and Katie about you inviting them for Christmas dinner. I said it should be fine. Oh, great. I'll make sure I've got enough food in. All right. Um, don't know whether Craig will be coming now. Oh? Everything all right? Not really. When I said he was stopping at his dad's, he... Uh, looks like he's moving in. Oh, Angela. I was hoping he'd get fed up after one night, but... I'm sorry. Yeah, well, looks like I'm the enemy along with Martin, eh? Darling. I'll see you. I suppose we'd better do some shopping at Fresco's, then? No, 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 you're all right. I'll get some on my way to work and you can get your essay done. Right. Just once more, come on. Oh, you mad, you? No, the lights are always the best bit. You don't really feel like it's Christmas. Until the lights are switched on. Are you ready? Dinner! Fantastic! Yeah, well, it ain't Christmas yet. Yeah, yeah, all right. There's no need to go pouring cold water on it. <laughs> but you're one of these cynical lot that don't actually believe in Father Christmas, uh, are you? No, I do. And I'll be hanging my stocking up as usual, so be warned. Yeah, all right. Actually, I use a massive pillowcase. Well, that is just plain greedy, that. And if you are greedy, Santa won't leave you out. No, oh, that's when you're naughty. Oh, yeah. Well, you are sometimes. Boy, tiger. Ah, oh, it does look great, though. Yeah, it's not bad, is it? When me and Craig were little, we used to love making our own decorations out of, like, pipe cleaners and kitchen foil and stuff like that. Mm. Mum's still got them all. Every year, she drags them out and sticks them on the tree. Starts off looking great and ends up looking like some out of a junk shop. You're really going to miss everyone, aren't you? A bit, yeah. But I'll come up. You're my family now. Mm. I just feel sorry for our Craig. I have really messed up his Christmas, haven't I? Mum in one place, me dad in another. What sort of time's he going to have? What time is it? One o'clock. You kidding? Hey, I didn't want to wake you. You needed your sleep. One day off school won't do you any harm. I'll write you a note for tomorrow. You all right? Yeah. Look, I'm sorry about yesterday. It won't happen again, right? Quality time from now on. I'll take your bowling. We haven't done that for a while, have we? Right. Right, get some something to eat.
I'll tell you what, we'll get a calf. I don't wanna. You're feeling alright, aren't you? Yeah, I'm just still a bit tired. I'd rather not. Alright, well I'll go out and bring the stomach back. Bacon butty, do you? Yeah, fine. Good man. Craig, okay? Fine. I well, think Butty's nearly ready yet. Look, I'm going as fast as I can. Did you get up to school, all right? Of course he did. Is the hotel you want to check up on? Because if you're trying to catch me out... Hey, I'm not. Look, this ain't easy for me, you know, having your own son siding against you. You've only yourself to blame. Oh, I don't think so. It's you that's wound him up. You that's using him to get at me. Using him in your stupid argument you're obsessed with. Well, it's not fair, Tommy. He's only a kid. He makes his own decisions. They just happen to be the right ones. Ain't enough, have you? Well, I don't blame you for kicking him out. It's like some out of psycho. Right, Tiger. I'm just going to get that shopping done. Well, I can think of a much better way of spending the afternoon. Oh, yeah. You're supposed to be doing that essay, aren't you? Yes, so I'll do it later. Mm. You're insatiable, you. You know what I don't... Complaining? Mm, definitely not, no. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> he needs food anyway. <laughs> <sighs> There you go, mate. Look, if you see your mum, don't let on you haven't been to school. She'll only use it to get at me. Okay. Dad. Yeah? You know what you were saying yesterday about not giving up? What was that then? You were saying it'd be easy to give in, but we, we shouldn't do the easy thing, we should do the right thing. Yeah? Well, how do you know if it's the right thing or not? I always go with my gut feeling. That's what I always do. Well, what if you do that and then you got feelings telling you something different later? Telling you you're wrong? What is this? You trying to tell me something? No, I was just thinking about what you were saying, that's all. I said a lot of things yesterday, mainly about Martin Platt. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, sort of. Well, whatever I said and however I put it, that's one case that's clear cut. He's in the wrong whichever way you look at it and we're in the right to fight him. You stick to your guns, mate. Now get that down your neck. I better get a move on. Oh, very romantic. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Um, do you have to go in? Eat it when you work nice. Oh, yeah, so do I. But yes, I have to. Mm. Right, well, hang on and I'll come with you. You can drop us off in town, No, you? no, I'm already pushing it. Oh, come on. I want to get you pretty. Go on, as soon as you put it that way. Good. I'll go get changed. All right, then. Uh, don't take all day about it. <laughs> Good job you didn't go to school. Forgot to dry your uniform. <sighs> your mother wish you'd have a field day. Right, I'm gonna have to start thinking about his tea. It's gonna have to be egg and chips, I'm afraid. I'll go to the shops tomorrow. No! Craig, Craig, what's wrong, mate? Just let me no, go! No, tell me what's wrong. <laughs> it's my dad, I've done something terrible. I'll fix his brakes. Fixed his brakes? So last night when you fell asleep on the couch, just let me go. Craig, Craig, stopping. calm down. You must have dreamt it or something. He left his car unlocked. I took your brake pipe spanner out of your toolbox. Just let me go. No, just come here, just come here. This is not some kind of joke, is it? It's not honest. Oh, about time. You're going to get me the sack you are. Oh, it'll be worth it when you see your Prezzy. Oh, my God. Get me! Oh, what now? Come on, let's go. Get me, get out of that car! Martin, come back! Martin! What are we going to do? Come on, get in the car! I'm trying to forget about him. He's in our faces ranting and raving again. Yeah, well, I don't suppose it helps him being over the road. Yeah. Maybe we should think about moving sometime. Oh, yeah, that'd be brutal. Yeah? Yeah. Well, until then, let's just mm. get him out of our head, shall we? How? We could always talk about my Christmas prezi. <laughs> no, as if I'm going to sell. It is a surprise. Surprise? Oh, now I love surprises. What's it going to be? Big, small, edible? Sexy. Have you mind? Ooh, here we go. What do you think you were playing at? I can't believe you could be so stupid. I'm sorry. Sorry? You will be folk thanks to our Katie. I'm just mad at him for what he'd done to you. 
just wanted everything to be like it was. Sorry, Dad. It's my fault, not yours. I'm feeling your head with all that stuff. How long will it be till this breaks fame? I don't know. Depends how much he uses them. If there's not much traffic, it could be alright, but if it's busy. Well, don't worry, we'll find them. I'm going to get David for Christmas. What do you want? Have you asked him? That's him, innit? I've got him. Oh! Flaming oh, idiot! Can't believe that! Get out of my way! We been left in it. Come on! Tell me we're gonna lose him! No, we'll be alright when we get round this van. Oh, come on, come on. Daddy's turning left. Yeah, got him, got him. Come on, mate, come Daddy, on! Daddy's gone! Yeah, I've got him, I've got him! Where is he? Oh, I don't know. And we've lost him. Craig, will you stop stating the obvious? Come on, B. No. W. I am not telling you what it begins with. You will just have to wait. Mm. X, X. That's not going to be a xylophone, is it? No. Right, I'll see you later anyway. <laughs> Bye. Alright, see ya. What are we going to do? I don't know, do I? There's Katie. Thank God for that. Alright, you. Just stay here and don't say a word. What are you doing here? He's marching with you. Have you been following us? You have, haven't you? Is he with you or not? No, he isn't. Why can't you just leave us alone? Where's he gone? Like I tell you. Look, I just want to talk to him, that's all. Yeah, and we all know what that means, don't we? Oh, and what is he doing? Look, he... I ain't got time for this. Get off me, Dad. Has he gone to work? He has, hasn't he? Don't you dare go after him! Quick, come here! No, I'm staying with me, Dad. Hello? It's me, listen, my dad's after you. You what? Well, he's been following us. He just pulled up now, wanted to know where you were. I didn't tell him, but I guess you're going to work. Look, I'm scared, Martin, he's in a right state. Yeah, all right, all right, just calm down. Well, do you think I should call the police? No, don't be daft. If I see him, I'll just lock my doors, okay? You promise? Yeah, I promise. Stop worrying. Okay. Right, well, I'll see you later. See ya. Bye. There he is! Oh no! Right. He's pulling up. There, yeah, come on Tommy. Let's see what you think of this then. What are you doing, you idiot? <laughs> Got ya! What's he doing? I don't know. Flaming times to play games. What if you can't catch up? What if he crashes before we get to him? Oh, where's he gone? That's him there, Nick. Just wait here! He's doing! Daddy's speeding up! I 
I'm gonna try and get alongside him. Why don't you win the dive? I've killed him. Craig, phone an ambulance. And the fire brigade. Stay here. Martin! Martin, can you hear me? Is he dead? Craig, I think get back! He is, isn't he? I've killed him. Jake, come here. The pressure left me. Get off. I've killed him. Jake, get here. Come here. Hello? The ambulance. We need an ambulance. Been a car crash. Cornwall Street. We need the fire brigade as well. Please, hurry. Please. Dad, I can smell the petrol. It's going to go up. Jake, what did I tell you? Get back. He's dead, isn't he? Just shift, will ya? Dad, what are we gonna do? Is he dead? Somebody give me on. Yeah, get me, son. Come here. You're all right, man. I'm losing all this weight. Listen to me. I need you to keep a lid on it. I can't. I nearly killed him. You've got to get on top of this. Or else we're both at it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Hey? Now, this is what happened. I noticed brake fluid leak in his car. Yeah? Tried to warn him, but he drove off, so he dived in the car and tried to stop him. Okay, mate. Yeah. Yeah, so I thought it was leaking, tried to warn him. Got her beeping at him at the lights, shouting at him just to, to register. First aid, right? Yeah, comes in handy. You're a brave man, dragging him out of that. So Mr Platt's a friend of yours? Neighbour. My lad knocks about who he's like. Right. So any road, I dragged him out, put him in the recovery position and uh, waited for you lot to arrive. Are you alright, lad? Yeah, fine. I need you to come down the station later, sign a statement. I need something from you and Olsen, all right? Both of us. If Mr Platt doesn't pull through, there'll be an investigation. So anything you can tell us will be very helpful. Right. We're up for that, Craig, aren't we, mate? It's all right, son. I don't bite. Not heroes like your dad, anyway. I'd obviously want to worry. Just a minute, lads. He said investigation. Just keep it down, will you? What are we going to do? Oh, my bar's off. I know, I'm out of credit. Wow, what's wrong? What's happened? Martin's had an accident. No way. A car crash. He's dead, isn't he? I don't know. You liar! He's dead? Well, he won ten minutes ago, but he's in a really bad way. Oh, he can't die me now, Mum, he can't. Oh. Oh. 
Come on now, come with me. Come on, darling. Ready for you now, Craig. Interview won't take long. Your dad'll be waiting here for you. Me? I should be with him, shouldn't I? Not allowed. We need to take your statement separately. Come on, lad. Right, young man, nothing to be afraid of. These cameras are linked to monitors through there. Why can't I just write it down? Because you're still a nipper, albeit a very tall one. Who's watching in there? Another copper. City fan, forget about her. So, why do you think you're here, Craig? How is it? Oh, what's she doing here? Why don't we just sell tickets? How is it, Gail? He's in intensive care. So now you know as much as we do. Right, love, come on, sit down here. No, I don't want to sit down. I'm Mr. Shafi, Martin's consultant. How is he? Um, I'm his ex-wife. These are his children. I'm his partner. How is he? Would you shut up? He's trying to tell us. Martin's critical but stable. Oh, thank God. What do you mean, critical? We've intubated him, made him as comfortable as possible. We've done a CT scan to check for head injuries. Brain damage? Fortunately, no apparent brain damage, a superficial head cut. Well, that's good, isn't it? It's encouraging, certainly, but it's very early days. What do you mean? We won't really know the extent of any damage until Martin wakes up. But he will wake up. We certainly hope so. We'll have to wait and see. Thank you, Doctor. Oh, I need to see him. I've uh, worked with him a few times. Post-operative care. He's a fine nurse. You should be proud. We are. Can we see him? Uh, speak to the ICU nurse. No more than two at a time. Might not wake up. No. That's not what he said, sweetheart. I mean, they always paint the blackest picture. That's their job. Hmm? Uh, why don't I make myself useful? I'll go and get some tea. Todd will give you a hand. Will I? Todd's taking me and David down to intensive care. Oh, no, no, I need to go see him, please. Oh, you're joking, aren't you? Please, Gil, just for five minutes. The family going first. I have to see him. Is their dad? Come on. Now. No, Mum, I have to see him. You shouldn't even be here. That's enough. She can go in after the family. David and Katie go first. Mum? Come on, Todd, you can show us the way. Get off him. What? Let go of me, Dad. Hey, it's fine to touch him. Just be careful. You must be David. He's always banging on about you. Bores the leg off me, he does. <laughs> you can talk to him, you know. Your dad, your camera's probably hear you. See, she thinks we're both his kids. You're gonna be fine. Everything's gonna be all right. You've well freaked us out, Dad. The whole family's here. Sarah, Nick, my mum and Gran. They all are. Except for Beth, she's at Emily's. There's enough of him to go around, you know. I'm not taking any of his love he's got for you. Why can't you just move away? Get in my dreams. But he won't move anywhere because his life is here with you. You ruined his life. Kid, can you not do this, David? No, are you? Look at him. He were all right until you came along. Everybody likes him. He'd loads of mates. Don't say that. Everyone thinks he's a perv because of you. No, they don't. He could die with everybody thinking bad things about him and everyone saying he's a perv. Hold on, Dad. You couldn't get him out because the car doors were locked. I thought he were dead. Is he dead? He's holding his own. So Martin's doors were locked? Yeah. My dad legs it over to our car and gets a wrench out the boot. 
he gave me his mobile and told me to ring an ambulance. Next thing he smashed Martin's window and was dragging him out. And there were flames on the back of the car. It, it was properly on fire. It's all right, lad. Just take your time. My dad dragged him out. And next thing, the old car just went up. The old thing just burst into flames. A couple of seconds longer and... Good job he had a wrench. He's a mechanic. Mechanics always have stuff like that. That's, that's how he spotted the brake fluid in the first place. Because he's a mechanic. Right. So Martin drove off. And my dad were giving it. I don't like the look of that. I mean, that is his job. We'll wait outside. You've only been here two minutes. No, it's all right then. I said she'd bend the rules. <laughs> Staff back, she said. <sighs> Got his Christmas present today. Blow all your pocket money. Sarah. Got him a really nice shirt. We'll say it's too trendy. It's 35 going on 65 sometimes. I'm sure he'll love it. I wanted to get him so much stupid and all. I saw these Elvis wigs in the precinct. It was the worst Elvis I've ever heard in my life. It's, de it's dead funny, you should hear it. Please, God, we will. But look at him. What am I going to do without him? Are we going to get done for lying? <laughs> if we're lucky. Perjury is the least of our problems. I'm sorry, Dad. Platt pulls through, he'll blub. He locked all his car doors. He must have thought I was going to kill him. But you saved his life. Only to save yours from being ruined. Is it better if he dies? I don't want him to die. Craig, will you just be quiet? I can't even still think. I could tell him the truth, I could tell him it was me. We've just signed statements. I know. Look at the state you're blubbing. Listen, you've got to keep a lid on it. I can't, Dad, I can't. Listen to me. I said listen. We stand by them statements. Okay. Yeah. We've got to hope that Platt pulls through. And that all the evidence has gone up in smoke. It's his word against ours. He might have got amnesia. He's still out of game. But if you start blabbing, or carrying on like this, the coppers will be onto us. You'll be off to boot camp, and I'll be looking at a stretching side. Have you got it? Eh? Good lad. Yeah, I'm just ringing about Martin Platt. No, no, I'm not a relative. I'm his best mate. Look, I just want to know if he's all right. Yeah, well, you and all love. Don't tell me up. Is that bad? No, oh, he'll be all right. Well, what if the police find out, you know, about what I did to the bricks? The car were burnt out. There's probably not for him to find. Nobody will ever know. Except you and me. And we're not telling anybody. Right? Now go and get ready for school. No, we're not until we find out what's happening. Craig, you've got to act normal. Otherwise somebody will suspect something. Look, if all happens at the hospital, I'll come and let you know. What, Martin? Oh, he fell asleep. Is he all right? Well, he's breathing on his own now. Look, I've got to check him over. Why don't you go out and get something to eat? But what if he does wake up? Well, he won't yet because of the sedation. He's going to be all right, isn't he? He's one of ours. Lousy advert if we can't look after one of his own. Is everything all right? No change. Still sedated. Have you been here all night? Of course. Why? Is that a problem? No. It just looked like you could do with some sleep, that's all. Yeah, well, I want to be here when he does wake up. You stopping? Why shouldn't she? 
She was married to him when you were still in nappies. David. I didn't want David to have to call on his own. I am concerned about Martin. He's still a good friend, after all. Yeah. They say they'll know more when the consultant's been. Shouldn't be long if you want to wear it. Breakfast? What's it got to do with you? Plenty if you're looking after Craig. I don't suppose you've heard about Martin. Is he dead? No. You knew about the accident. I was the one that pulled him out of the car before it went up. Eh? I was chasing him. You were? When he set off, I saw brake fluid leaking out of his car. I tried to warn him, but he crashed. And you pulled him out? Well, couldn't you have been hurt if it were going to explode? You don't think about that, do you? How is he, anyway? That's still unconscious, last I heard. Is this Martin you're talking about? Yeah, Tommy saved his life. He got him out of the car before it blew up. Is that right? Good on you, man. It weren't like that. Don't be so modest. It must have been tempting to leave him in the car, not knowing it was Martin and all. Kieran, that's not the least bit funny. He wouldn't just stand there and watch somebody die. No, no. You're a hero. Don't question. You'd have done the same. It's just me that I'm to be there. Is Katie OK? Yeah, she's at the hospital. Give him my best, yeah? Yeah. Well, I suppose you'd take something like this to make you ask about your daughter. How is he? Oh, no change. Oh, you know it's only two at a time. He's my dad. And I don't take orders from you. Mum is waking up. No, 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 no. Yeah. Martin. You can't come in here. There's already far too many in here. Are you boys coming Please. around? Please. Please, thank you. Oh, thirsty. What's going on? Oh, you've had an accident, but you're going to be okay. You're in an hospital. Casey. Now then, now then, Martin. Everyone's here. Am I dying? No. You were lucky. You bashed your head. So there won't be much damage. Mum, is it going to be all right? Yes, I'm sure he is. Oh, thank God. And when they said I'd had an accident, and you weren't here. Oh, no, I was just watching through the window. It must stop me coming in. I just couldn't understand why I was here. I mean, I still... <laughs> oh, I'm just remembering it all in slow motion. It was awful. One had told me that you were in hey, here. Hey. You heard what the doctor had to say. I'm going to be fine. So stop. You worrying. I love you, Martin. Love you too. Right, mate, they said you'd come round. It was a bit of a scare, though. Right, mate. <laughs> How's the car? <laughs> <laughs> Worse than you. Are you okay? Yeah, I am now. What are you doing here? How is he? Okay. He came round about an hour or so back. The doctor's been in and he's confident. Good. How come you're not in there? It's not my turn. Anyway, oh, what's the matter? Can't you stand Martin's real family being here, so you bring reinforcements? Actually, I've come with some news. If it weren't for her dad, Martin wouldn't be here at all. What? Yeah. It were him that got Martin out of the car before it burst into flames. Or do you consider that too much of Katie's family taking over? I didn't know. Yeah, well, next time, just don't think the worst of other people, eh? My dad saved Martin. Yeah. He saw brake fluid leaking out of his car, so we were trying to stop him. Well, that's lucky. I'm sorry. Would you tell him thank you for us? Well, I could, yeah, but wouldn't you rather thank him yourself? Both of you. Hey, Nick. Uh, any news on Martin? Uh, yeah, they reckon he's going to be all right, which I hear stands to you. Yeah, well, glad it was worth it. Alright, see you, mate. See ya. What if he tells him what happened? He doesn't know other than that his brakes failed. He's gonna be okay, that's the main thing. Everything okay, love? You mean Martin? Major leak concussion, the doctors reckon, but apart from that, hey, it could have been a heck of a lot worse. Is someone up? Yeah. It's me dad. I've got to tell you, sent his love. He's trying. Well, in that case, maybe you can persuade me that I'm wrong about him being there when Martin crashed. Well, what do you mean? It doesn't add up. It's too convenient. But I told you, love, about the brake fluid on the road and he tried to stop him. Yeah, that's what I mean. He saw a pool of summer on the road 
You wouldn't just think, oh, that's brake fluid, he's going to crash a bit of warning. Oh, Katie's a mechanic, he knows about this, what it meant. Yeah, a mechanic who threatened to kill him the day before. You what? And suddenly there's no brake fluid in Martin's car, and my dad's chasing him all over town, and surprise, surprise, his brakes fail. Katie, he tried to stop him. You mean he tried to make him use his brakes? That didn't work. Oh, for goodness sake, he's the one that saved Martin's life. The car could have blown up with him in it. They both could have been killed. No, listen, it fits. He sabotaged his brakes. Then he followed him to watch him crash into a, a lorry or go straight into a wall or something. He wanted to watch Martin die. How sick is that, eh? But he saw he wasn't killed outright and he got cold feet. Oh, I'm sorry, love. It's, it's fantasy, this. It's stupid. And I can't believe that you're saying these things about your own father. Deep down, ma'am, you know I'm right. My dad's no hero. If that car had blown up before he got to Martin, he'd have been a murderer. Katie, wait up. What do you want? Give me that lip. What do you think I want? You accuse your dad of trying to kill Martin and you expect me to forget about it? He did it. Incapable! Oh, get real! Look at the temper on him! Look where he goes, he goes like that! If you wanted to kill Martin, he'd have battered him to death on first day. Oh, well, that is really reassuring. Well, he doesn't plan ahead, does yeah, he? Yes, well, he did this time. I think he did something to Martin's brakes. Oh, right. So then he chases him down the road, trying to stop him, and uh, then he pulls him out of a burning car. Great murder, isn't it? Yeah, well, he bottled it. What are you thinking, Katie? You're supposed to be a clever girl. Look, I'm not going to the police until I've spoken to Martin. But as far as I'm concerned, my dad is capable of anything. Katie! No, darling. You'll be late clocking on. What? We've got to be on the dot today. Buttering up Baldwin for Christmas do. Oh, yeah. No excuses. Quick sticks. Hey. It's me. Hi, darling. How are you feeling? Okay. You're not really with me, are you? You're up to tell me what happened somehow. Of course he is in his concussed. Listen, have, uh, have you seen a doctor? There's been no one around since I came in. But they wouldn't tell you anything anyway. They only talk to family and next of kin, and you're neither. What did the doctor say? Said he's fine. He'll sleep most of today, but he's fine. What are you telling her for? She's Tat's girlfriend. Whether we like it or not, she's got to know. Well, I don't like it. So come and get me when she's gone. Thanks for that. Hey, I don't like you any more than she does. I think you're the worst thing that's ever happened to him. I'm not having you to argue him when he's trying to sleep. Hey, Tommy! Come here a minute. Don't say a word. All right, lads. Yeah, look, I uh, heard what you did for Martin. Well done. I mean, after what he's done to your family. Must have took some guts. Well, I didn't really have a choice, did I? I could hardly watch him burn. I suppose not. Still, shows that you never meant what you said about threatening to kill him, eh? Don't be stupid, of course he didn't mean it. He's only having a laugh. I was only kidding. He's still in shock. Seeing the accident shook him up a bit. Yeah, I suppose so. Come on, mate, let's get you on. See you later, lads. Yeah. See ya. Did you see Martin? Sleep. Couldn't tell me anything. Do you really think my dad had nothing to do with it? I've been married to him for 20 years. Do you think I could stay with someone I thought were a murderer? What, and he didn't crush your mind for a second? No. Mum, I know I'm prejudiced, but he's done nothing right for months. I hate him. I can't think straight yeah, well, about You can't him. think yeah, that Yeah, and I've tried to be fair. I'm partial, but I can't get away from it. I'm sure he tried to kill Martin. And I'm sure he didn't. Please, don't do anything stupid. Just speak to him. Ask him what happened, he'll put you right. He's a good man. You've got to be strong now, Craig. Like I said, if we stay calm and stick to our story, no one will ever find out. What they do to me? Well, we have to move again. Aren't you listening? No, what's going to happen? The police believed us. What about when they questioned Martin? What about it? Our story fits. It's not our fault he thought we were chasing him. If you'd have listened to me instead of speeding off, none of this would have happened. Please. Nobody's suspicious. But they will be if we act guilty. Come in. I 
How's Martin? Like you care. I think you tried to kill him. Do you know? Look, I'm sorry Martin got hurt. I admit I hate him, but I wouldn't do him any harm. He's not worth doing time over. What are you talking about? The first thing you did when you found out about us was thump him. Well, that's different. He deserved a smack. Surely even you can see that. This ain't getting us anywhere. Well, let's get down to it then. Because I assume Detective Katie is here to ask us some questions. When did you see the brake fluid leaking? When you drove away. Then why were you running towards us before we even set off? I weren't running. I was walking. I ran when I saw what it was. <sighs> why didn't you tell me about the brake fluid when Martin dropped me off? I could have called him. You wouldn't have believed me. You always think the worst of me. Yeah, I do. <sighs> Credit me with a bit of intelligence. I would have come up with a better plan than that. I mean, what could have happened? He could have ploughed into a bus queue. How reckless do you think I am? I dragged him from the car. I saved his life. Satisfied? No. <sighs> what more do you want? Uh, what's bothering me is the coincidence. There's something wrong with his car. You're a mechanic. He goes too fast. You're chasing him. He nearly dies. You want him dead! I don't. I think that you messed with Martin's brakes when you were smashed out of your skull. Then you woke up, remembered what you'd done, and thought better of it. But it was too late, and that is when you were chasing us. That's not what happened! Shut it, Craig! No, tell me what happened, Craig. Not another word. He knows something. He knows nothing. He's gonna tell me what He's happened! He's not saying anything! I ain't got a choice, never. What are you doing, Katie? Dad, what's she doing? Oh, don't worry. It's gonna be fine. She won't do anything. How can I help you? I want to report a crime. Then you've come to the right place. My boyfriend had a car crash on uh, on Monday. Yeah. It wasn't an accident. My dad tried to kill him. Hey, we stuck to the story. There's not more we can do. Dad, she thinks she sabotaged Martin's car. And you know why? She's upset. She wants someone to blame. She blames you. Well, yeah, because I fit the bill. What if she tells the police? She won't. Well, what if she tells someone else and they tell the police? Like Mam, she always sides with Katie. Well, what do you expect me to do, Craig? You've got to tell her you didn't do it. I've told her the story. I've got to stick to it now. You've got to do more than that. I could tell them the truth. Hey, you've got to be a man about this, do you understand? You say nothing. How are you, love? I suppose our Katie's been wrong, hasn't she? No, why? Well, she's got it into her head that it was me that tampered with Martin's car. Yeah, I know. What she said exactly? Nothing exactly, just that she has her suspicions. <sighs> well, they're more than suspicions now. Hey, you make yourself a sarny. I'm not hungry. Now! Look, you've got to tell her to stop spreading it. It's going to get out of hand. Yeah, all right, I'll have a word with her. And say so what? I never touched that car, Angie. I swear to God. I know. Do you? Look, I hope you're fishing for some support here. <sighs> Look, if Katie's got reason to suspect me, so have you. I've not done either of you any favours, have I? No. Because you're pig-headed and you're intolerant. And, and the, the sad thing is you can't even see it. But you're not a murderer. And if I thought you were, then I'm insulted that you think I'd just stand by and let our daughter sort it out. Thanks, Angela. You're welcome. Dad? Thomas Harris. DS Ripley. I'd like to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. What's going on? I'm investigating an allegation made against you in connection with an accident involving Martin Platt. I'd like you to accompany me to the station, please. He's not done anything! Hey, Craig, quiet. I'd like to keep this as informal as possible. The car's waiting outside. Go on. Don't go, Dad. <laughs> hey, taking him in. Oh. Being bad tempered don't make a man guilty, you know. Tell that to the plot. You can't arrest me, Dad. Oh, Craig, calm down. I'm not under arrest. They're just answering some questions. But well, why? You've not done anything. Look, it's all right, love. Angela, get inside. When you're ready, Mr. Harris. Let's get on with it. Then. Put them on to him. Yeah, I did. You never touched Martin's car. Well, that's for the police to decide. No, it isn't. It's the truth. Go inside. Go on. You 
you know what your dad's like as well as I do. Oh, and he'd never raise a finger to hurt Martin, would he? Not like this, no. All you've done is hurt me and Craig. Well, they could have hurt you a lot more, ma'am. I could have been in that car. If I'd have died, he'd have gone with you to my funeral. And all the time he'd have been thinking, problem solved. But he's your dad, for God's sake. You will hope he goes to jail. Because it'll be problem solved for both of us. Good Katie. Excuse me. I'll have to go get ready. Got to go to the hospital and help my boyfriend brush his teeth. I know he's brake fluid leaking out of his car. I tried to stop him. You chased after him? Well, yeah, I had to. But instead of pulling over, Mr Platt accelerated. Why do you think that was? You know about him and my daughter then? I do now. You made no mention of it in your statement to PC West. Because it had nothing to do with the crash, even though you hated him. You laid into him in your own back garden. We've learnt to keep his distance since then. He can't have been that distant. He saw a few drops of fluid leaking out of his car. He'd struggled to see that in daylight and this was darkness. How did you manage that? I noticed these things. I'm a mechanic. This is a man you threatened, a man you assaulted, and you tell me you went out your way to save his life? Yeah. Why? You hated him for defiling your daughter. Why not let nature take its course? We're talking about a man's life. Oh, your daughter's. She was in the car as well, wasn't she? Well, yeah, to start with. What are you saying? That this was something you hadn't foreseen. You saw Katie getting into the car and you panicked. Well, yeah, I was worried. Of course I was. But he dropped her off and I carried on after him. After you'd spoken to your daughter, who became so worried for Mr Platt's safety, she rang him to warn him you were on the way. Yeah, but it's how I came across. I was panicking, weren't I? I was desperate. You understand what I'm telling you? Panicking and desperate. Yeah. I think so, Mr Harris. Hiya. He's expecting you. Oh, we'll see you then. Sorry. How are you? How's David? How oh, you know? Look, I'm sorry we haven't spoken properly since it all happened. Well, you've never said a lot when it comes to Martin. Well, I'll leave it out, Sarah. Hiya. Hiya. I can't help the way I feel about it, alright? Yeah, well, there's no need to bring it up again now. No, if she wants to speak her mind, that's fine. Just sorry you still feel that way. You were the only mate I had a few months ago. Yeah, and we're all here for me, Dad. We just want him to get better so we can all get out of here. I suppose it's not your fault, isn't it? It's no one's fault. It were a dad who saved his life, don't forget. Yeah. What happened? Let me go, didn't they? No charge? No. Pending further inquiries, they said. What to tell you? Look, there's uh, plenty more. You must be famished. No, you're all right. I don't want to put you out. Uh, Craig. Listen, mate. You follow me on in a bit. Go and finish your food. What does that mean? Further inquiries? Well, they've got to look into it. It's their duty. But they obviously know it was an accident. What if it wasn't? Love, mine's not the kind of blog that everybody hates. I just can't believe that somebody did something so evil. What if they did, though? Why are you asking? Say someone did it and tried to pin it on Dad. The police aren't so daft. Listen, they are going to find the person who did this and put them away for a very long time. Only if they confess, though. No, not necessarily. There might be some other nosy so-and-so like me saw something they shouldn't. The truth will come out, love. Always does. All right, mate. What did they ask you? Ah, oh, don't worry about it. Was it bad? They know about me and Martin. They must have said more than that. They wondered how I knew the brake fluid were leaking. Well, it's dead sus when you think about it, but I'm still here, Anna. Yeah, for how long? What about when they put the pressure on you? They didn't make it easy for me today. Hey, I don't want to see that face, do you hear me? Look, they could hold a gun to my head and I wouldn't tell a soul, I swear to you. It's not about me, Dad. I don't want them to put you away. It won't come to that. It could. I want to confess. Listen to me. You do that and your life's ruined. And what about yours? They won't sling me in jail. The law don't work like that. They're gonna look at the car. If there was any evidence, we'd know about it by now. You've got to pull yourself together, Craig. If you carry on like this, you say nothing. You leave it all to me. Katie's calling you a murderer. Martin's gonna say exactly the same. The police are onto you and they don't believe you. One of us is going to prison, Dad. Have you heard from the police? No, no. Couldn't sleep last night for worrying. I've told you, they've got no time. They want me back round here. 
Where's Craig? Just missed him. He's just gone out. I've just come to see him. We'll be back later. How was he? Well, he's wound up about yesterday, the coppers and all that, but he's all right. Well, I can see you're worried about him. <sighs> he's fine. You just leave him alone. <sighs> this isn't... This isn't just about the police. I can tell. I know my own son. There's more to it. How do you mean? Well, he hasn't been the same since we split up. No, no, he hasn't. How did we come to this, eh? Because of me. Sorry, Ange. Yeah. So am I. He tried to hurt Matt and he tried to kill him. He can't just get away with that. He didn't do anything. Oh, so what did he do then, Craig? How did he make Martin crash? Did he force him off the road? No. Come on, you were there. <laughs> he tried to stop him. He tried to get him out of the car. What, to beat him up? No. I know you're lying. I promise you, he didn't do anything. Just tell me the truth. I'm sorry, all right. I, I didn't realise the way it'd turn out. The way what'd turn out? Craig, get in the flat. Your mum's cooking dinner. Scared of what he might tell me? Hey, I've got no to be ashamed of. How could you do it, Dad? How could you do it to me? I tried to save him. Dad, shut up, Craig. I pulled him out of the car. I saved his life. You're lying. I know you are. But I'm telling you now, you won't get away with it. It is only a matter of time before the police piece everything together and pull you back in. Come on, Craig. I hope you'll be in prison for what you've done. I do. I hope you'll be dying there. Hiya. Have you seen Mike Baldwin? Oh, he's just paying a visit, love. How's things, Ange? Um, not too bad. What's happening with Tommy? Police wanted to talk to him, that's all. I'm not going to take it any further. Excuse me. You wouldn't know where I could find a Kevin Webster, would you? Uh, Kevin, um... Oh, no. Mr Webster? Yeah? Detective Sergeant Ripley. I wondered if I could just ask you a few questions in connection with Thomas Harris. Oh, well, yeah, no problem. Hey! I told you he was guilty. Look, uh, we'll do it at the Gabby's, though, eh? Hey, I've been working with him for months, so best come with you. I thought this were all over. Oh, come on, why don't you come and sit down, Anne? No, no, I better go and see Tommy. Well, you've got to admit, it's not looking good, is it? Mm. Looking uh, loads better. Yeah, well, you should have seen me a few minutes ago. I was in a very compromising position with that blonde nurse. Well, you could at least pretend to be jealous. I've uh, brought you some stuff, mags and that. Right, OK, thanks. Oh, and guess what? Uh, what? Well, fingers crossed. <sighs> Touch wood and all that malarkey. If things stay the same, you should be out of here by Christmas Eve. Yeah, well, I thought so. Oh, and I've had another visitor this morning. The police. I wanted to know what I remember about the accident. And what do you remember? Oh, not much, really. But anyway... Uh, uh, I left this. Said to ring them back in case anything came back to me. Did they say anything else? Like what? Katie? I'm sorry, Martin. What's up? I don't even know how to say this. I've been to the police. What for? About my dad. I think he tried to kill you. What's up? Nothing. The police are at the garage. What? Not to worry about. You said they dropped it. I am worried, Tommy. Oh, stop panicking, will you? No one's been arrested, no one's been charged. Let's just calm down. Craig! Craig, where are you going? Leave him. He needs some time on his own. Were you aware of the bad feeling between Mr. Harris and Martin Platt? The whole street knew that he hated him. Look, he thought Martin was a bit old for his daughter. Why did you sack him? Drink. Well, he was a bit and he was he was late. His mind wasn't on the job properly. And he messed up a guy's wheel nuts and nearly killed him. Yeah, that was the final straw. Does he strike you as a violent man? He struck me right on the end of my nose. He hit you? Yeah, he thought I was going out with Kate, didn't he, Kev? Yeah, well, he's got a bit of a temper. Especially when it comes to his daughter. Right. It's been very helpful, Mr. Webster. Think of anything else, give us a call. Been filling him in, have you? Just tell him the truth, Craig. He hasn't done anything. Yeah, well, that's for the police to decide. We'll be in touch. My dad's innocent. He's innocent! Hiya. Who do you think you're talking to? Go on, you murdering scumbag of a dad. You what? You heard. He's innocent. 
I hope he gets stuck away with all the rest of the murderers, rapists and low lives. He saved your dad's life. I hope he gets life. You know nothing, right? You're just sad ignorant kid and you're full of rubbish just like your sad ignorant dad. Hey, scrap. Craig, leave him! He said to go to prison. I don't care. Get back to the flat now. Move it! Fighting's not going to solve out, you know that, don't you? Yeah, well, you should have thought about that a long time ago. What are you lot gawping at? It's finished. Show's over. Like father, like son, eh? Well, that don't make sense. You're supposed to have saved me. Yeah, well, that's what he said. But that don't make sense either. Why was he there when the accident happened? Why did he chase you halfway across Manchester? Mm -hmm. I've asked him and I've asked him and I've even spoken to our Craig. But no one can give me a reasonable explanation for him being there. Mm. So what can you remember about the accident? <sighs> like I said, not much. Most of it's a blank. Can you remember seeing my dad? <sighs> Come on, think. I phoned you to tell you he was after you. Oh, yeah. Okay. I remember that. We were, uh, we were driving along the road. And he was there. He was shouting something. What? What was he shouting? Oh, I don't know. I can't remember, can I? <sighs> right, well, he was following you. Then what happened? Did he catch up with you? Did, did he force you off the road? I don't know. We, we came up to the junction. And I think it was your dad next to me. He was chasing me. Yeah, that's right. And then we came up to a dead end. And I couldn't stop. I want to see him. What? I want to speak to your dad. For goodness sake, Craig. Things are bad enough between us and them. I think David was having a pop at me. Oh, so you think he's right? No, of course I don't. Listen, Andrew, will you give us five minutes? No, I'm not going anywhere while he's in this state. Please. I just want to have a chat with him, man to man. All right, no more fighting, Craig, right? Look, mate, I know you're under pressure, but brawling in the street. That's what you do. What? No, you've got a problem with something, you're just wading with your fists. Maybe I'm wrong. I am wrong. Dad, I've come to a decision. I'm gonna tell the police. No. I'm sick of it. I can't take it anymore. I'm sick of people slagging you off. Saying that you tried to kill Martin when you didn't. It was me. I've just got to be a man and admit it. Look, I know you did the deed, Craig, but by God, it was my fault. Your mum, Katie, I've ruined it for everyone. Well, I can make it better. I don't want you to. I don't want you messing up the rest of your life. Sooner or later, Dad, the police are going to realise what caused the accident. I might as well just tell them. Look, pal, just hang on, just a few more days, eh? Hello? Katie? At the hospital, what for? What did he say? OK, I'll be there in half an hour. That was our Katie, I'm going to the hospital. What for? I don't know. Platt wants to speak to me. You wanted to see me? Yeah. You can give us five minutes. No, I'm going nowhere. Katie, please. You lay one finger on him, anything, and I'll have security in here quicker than you can say attempted murder. Look, I know what you're thinking. What everyone's thinking. What did he do? What? Well, I've been thinking it over and over, Tommy. What do you do to the brakes on my car? Hey, he cut me cable. Didn't to me brake fluid. I don't know what you're talking about. Don't take me for a fool, Tommy. You're a mechanic. You must know how brakes work. I never worked on your car. Oh, I'm sure you never did it in the garage. That'd be far too risky, wouldn't it? Too many witnesses. Look, Martin, I don't know what you're trying to say. I've just remembered what happened before the accident, Tommy. 
My brakes weren't responding, because someone had done something to them. That's what caused the crash now. Let me think. Who wanted me dead that much? Hm. Okay then. Let's get the police in, shall we? See what they think. No! Yeah. Yeah. It's all over, Tommy. Because I've worked it out. It had to be you. And when the police investigate, when the forensics go over the car, which they're bound to do, they're going to know it was you too, aren't they? Because it's going to be covered in fingerprints. Your fingerprints. No, the police don't have to look at anything. I did it. I'll fix your brakes. Come and get your breakfast. What are we having? Cornflakes. Oh, I'm sick of cornflakes. Yeah, well, there's no else to get them down you. Oh, I'm going to steady on the milk, because that's all there is, and I want to make a pot of tea. Well, give us some money, I'll go down to the shop and get some more milk and eggs and bread and stuff. There's no point. We might as well make do with what we've got, because by tonight, you're probably going to be back at your mum's. Why can't I stop here? You said I could. Because by tonight, I probably won't be here. What do you mean? Look, when I went to the hospital last night and saw Platt, he told me that he knew somebody had tampered with his brakes. I told him it was me. Oh, Dad, shut up and listen, will ya? But listen, Craig. He remembers everything about the accident. Us chasing after him, everything. Now, when he's talked to the police and they've checked the brakes on that car have been got out, they're going to arrest somebody. And it's not going to be you. That's just the way it is. Anyway, you'll be all right. You'll be back at your mum's. What's up with you? We're a bit off, aren't we, then? Martin, I wish you'd just tell me what you want me dad here for. I mean, it wouldn't be for a friendly visit, would it? Oh, no. I want to talk to him. About the accident. Well, what did he say? Look, why won't you tell me? Katie, I will tell you. I just want your time to get my head around it, okay? Look, the thing is, he had a confession to make. The car crash. Well, it was no accident. I knew it. What did I say? He deliberately ran you off the road. Well, no, he didn't. He was chasing after me to try and get me to stop, so he says. Well, anyway, what he'd done, he'd sabotaged my brakes, hadn't he? So when I came to stop, I couldn't, could I? They were completely useless. Well, I knew he'd mess with your brakes, but I don't buy him trying to stop you. Mm. Well, he reckons he felt bad about what he'd done, so he's chasing after me to try and warn me. Do you believe that? Well, I don't know. I wish I did. Well, it makes no odds anyway. He knew what he was doing. He was setting you up so that you'd get hurt. Mangled up or killed even. So what did the police say? Well, I haven't told him yet, have I? Oh, come on, Katie. I don't feel too good. I just want to go home and put my feet up. Before the police start interrogating me. Putting me through it all again. Get me to make statements. And anyway. I think we should think about this. It's your dad, Katie. We're talking about him going to prison here. Yeah, well, it's what he deserves. Hell, please. Greg, thanks. Oh, Martin, I heard you was coming out today. Thought you might fancy a lift. Oh, Greg, cheers, mate. Yeah, hey, I'll give us it. Oh, thank you. How are you feeling? Oh, I'll be glad to get back home. Hospitals are all right for working in. Mm. <laughs> uh, look, Katie, there's uh, something I want to say as well. There's a couple of policemen asking questions about your dad. I didn't want to drop him in it, but I had to tell him about sacking him and... I was drinking and stuff. Good. You don't have to feel any loyalty for him, Kevin, because he was... Uh, just leave it, Katie. Let's just get on, mate. Everything else will keep, OK? I suppose so. What's up? One of the girls said that she saw you coming out of the hospital last night. What were you doing there? Martin Platt asked me to go and see him. Well, what did he want? Same thing the police wanted. How come he ended up in hospital? Was it an accident or what? So what did you tell him? Same thing I told the police. It's an accident, that's all. Dad? Hey, I'm talking to your mother here. Don't start shoving your oar in. Give up for picking on the lad. If he's got something to say, let him say it. He was there when it happened, just like you, so he's entitled. He can't tell you anything that I ain't told you. Isn't that right, Craig? Yeah, I suppose so. Is this not bothering you, Craig? Of course it isn't. I'm asking him, not you. Hey, and I'm telling you, aren't you supposed to be at work? Because I suggest you get back there before you end up on the dole and all. Oh, right, and you were asking to get fired, weren't you, Tommy, eh? Pouring drink down your neck like there were no tomorrow. You're a mess, Tommy. Look at the state of you. Look at the, the state of this place. 
not fit for a kid to live like this. Craig, come back. I want to talk to you. Angela, just let him go. Look, uh, I think you better sit down. There's one or two things you ought to know. And I'd sooner hear them from me than I, Craig. Or the police come to that. The thing is, the police might find some of the shunt under that car of Platts. Such as what? Interference with his brakes. Oh, Tommy, you idiot. You tampered with his brakes. You hated Martin that much. You'd do something like that. Well, you deserve everything that's coming to you. No, I'm glad you think so. Only it weren't me. I'm not the only one round here knows a thing or two about motors, you know. Oh, don't come that. Hey, look, I'm trying to tell you something here. Yeah? It was our Craig. He fixed the brake fluid so it leaked. Then after a bit, the brakes don't work. Bingo. I don't believe you. you wouldn't do something like that. Yeah, well, that's what I'm counting on the police believing and all. Oh, our Craig did it all right. He'll tell you himself. But don't worry. I've told Platt it was me. It's just a case of waiting for the police to come and arrest me now. So you've got to keep your mouth shut, haven't you? And our Craig's and all. If there's one thing I can do for him now, is to try and keep him out of the nick. Don't you think you ought to get back into bed? Hmm. I've been going on my own. <laughs> Had enough of that while I was in hospital. Right, well, in that case, uh, you're well enough to phone the police and tell them what my dad did. <sighs> Are you sure about this? Because I'm not. I mean, what are they going to charge him with? Attempted murder or something? Well, all I'm saying is, I think we should think about it. I have been thinking about it. Ever since I got a feeling that this crash wasn't an accident. But what are we supposed to do? Pretend it never happened? Hmm. Maybe not. No, there's no maybe about it. Suppose he tries it again. Well, he wouldn't, buddy. As soon as he came to me and confessed... Since he was sorry, he tried to stop me. He even told me that he dragged me out of the car just before it set on fire. Well, suppose that's all a tale. Suppose he came and confessed because he knew the police were going to get evidence. Suppose he figured out that you feel bad about shopping him. Yeah, that's a hell of a lot of supposing, Katie. Too much for me. Yeah, me and all. That's why somebody else ought to sort this out. The police. <sighs> Look, I'm going out. If you'll be all right on your own. I'm going to do the buying in yet. But phone at the police. I think you have to. Yeah, you're right. Don't suppose it can wait till after Christmas, though, can it? Okay, fair enough. I'll rig today. Good. Oh, I just I wish you'd have told me straight off as soon as it happened. Well, you think so? I thought you had enough misery in your life already. I thought you might never have to know. How do you mean? Well, if our Katie hadn't gone mouth enough to the police... I mean, till then, it looked like just another traffic accident, didn't it? But no, she has to go to the police tell them I've got it in for Platt. I mean, if she hadn't done that, we'd have been all right. All right? All right? Our Craig put somebody in hospital and you think it'll be fine if it don't come out? Why? That's what I want to know. What did he think he was going to achieve by her in mine? Well, he thought... If something nasty happened to Platt, if you could get him out of the way, our Katie would come back home. I'd come back home. It'd all be like it used to be. He'd get his family back. We've done this. You and me. And Katie and all and Martin. While we've been tearing each other to bits, the person that's been hurt the most is Craig. So you can see what I'm telling you, can't you? You can understand why I told Platt I fixed his brakes. I don't want our Craig hurt anymore. I don't want to see him sent to a prison for kids. Because no matter what they call them, that's what they are. No, it's, it's better if I go down, not him. I got your key again, Katie. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. Where's that card? Uh. Alright, Craig. Are you looking for your Katie? She's gone shopping. Good. It's just as well she's not here. Because you made her think that my dad's horrible. Oh, come on, Craig. Anyway, it's you I came to see. And it's about my dad. Now, I know you think he messed up your brakes so you'd crash, but he didn't. No. I don't just think it. I know it. 
No, it wasn't him. He didn't do out. Look, Craig, I'm sorry. I know how you feel about your dad. I know it's hard for you to face. I understand all that, but... Well, you're going to have to hear it sometime. Your dad came to me. He admitted he'd tamper with me breaks. He confessed to everything. He wasn't confessing, he was lying. Oh, come on, Craig. I'll tell you why. That's why I'm here. He want me dad will fix your bricks, see you'd crash. It were me. <laughs> Craig, just go home, will you? I know how much you love your dad. Because you caused everything. You took away our kit. You made me mum and dad fall out so they'd split up. That's why I did your bricks, because it's all your fault. And I hate you. Go on, put it on, Elvis. No, I'm not putting that on. Look at it, it might attack me. Uh, go on. Hey. You can do that song about the uh, dead dog. What old shit? Yeah, it always makes me cry. I think it's just the way you sing it. Old shit, what's it all? Yeah, well, you can practice whilst I'm out. Uh, hang about. Where are you going? Well, we've nothing in for Christmas dinner. I thought you went yesterday. Well, that was for another present for you. Oh, so we've got no food then? No. Hmm, perhaps I should have feigned a relapse and stayed in hospital because we put a great show on there, you know. <sighs> And would you have preferred that? No, well, no, actually. Mm. Anyway, I don't think I'm up to a four-course meal. Good, cos I'm not up for cooking one. Huh. But I think we should have a, at least a pudding. Yeah, a, and a bottle of wine. All right. Right, well, I shan't be long. Oh, right. what did the police say when uh, you phoned them? Oh, um, well, well, I didn't really. I was a bit tired. I meant to. Phone them now, Martin. Let's just get it over and done with. It's Christmas Day. Oh, and do the stop hunting down murderers because it's a bank holiday. Your dad is not a murderer, not Katie. Not one trying. He saved me life. <sighs> Last minute panic. Yeah, and he confessed what he'd done. To you, yeah. But that is not good enough, not for me. Not after what he's done. That man thumped you, locked me up, and just to add icing on the cake, he then kept me a man from seeing me. And if that wasn't enough, it... Look, I just want the truth out, Martin. I want the world to know. So phone them for me. Okay, right. <sighs> if you've come to give me grief again, Ange, I can't take it. Honest, I've had enough. I've come to see Craig. Where is he? In the bedroom. He must be the only kid in the land who hasn't opened a present yet. Well, it doesn't surprise you, does it? How is he? He's not said a word. Craig, love, it's me. It's your mum. It's Christmas. Come to say Happy Christmas. He won't come out. Shut up, Tommy. Come on, love, come out and say Happy Christmas. Craig, please, come out. Listen, love. What you were trying to do... OK, there's no getting round it. It were really... What could have happened, don't bear thinking about. But you're doing your best to make up for it, and that's what you've got to hold on to. We all do daft stuff sometimes. But there's no point in hiding yourself away. At the end of the day, nobody were really harmed. You and your dad made sure of that. And now your dad's doing his best to make amends for his part in it. You didn't have a part in it. I did, Paul. And I'm going to take the responsibility. Come on out, love. Please. Life goes on. And I'm cooking Christmas dinner for both of you. Well, didn't fancy cooking just for one. And I've got a pile of spuds. Can't let them go to waste. Mum. Oh. Now listen, you. I don't want you to worry. Because whatever happens, we'll handle it now. We're going to sort everything out. Because that's what you've got a mum and a dad for. Yeah? <sighs> Christmas Day, and I couldn't find a pudding for love and money. So I've had to settle for some soup instead. Right, what do the police say? Look me around. What are you doing? I'm going visiting. You shouldn't even be out of bed. Yeah, well, things to do, places to go, people to see. Well, and am I invited? Well, no, that's just the point. We're not, are we? What's the game, Martin? There's no game. I'm going to see your family. Have you gone bonkers? D did they not give you a brain scan? 
There is no way I'm spending a second of my time with them. All right, I'll go on my own. But it's best to get come. We haven't got many sprouts each. We'll have to make do on roast potatoes, eh? Oh, I hate sprouts. Do you know, nobody's got a good word to say about them. A bit like the Harris's, really, eh? <laughs> yeah, well, we've lived through that before. Dare say we can do it again. I'll get that, would you, Craig? Tom, can you see if there's anything that we can use as napkins, love? Yeah. Will kitchen roll do? Got visitors, Tom. Martin, Katie. What brings you here, love? I'm waiting for Martin to tell me that. Well, look, I thought you ought to know. I've talked to the police. Fair enough. It's more than fair, Dad. You've tried to kill him. Kate! No, no, you leave this to your mum and dad, love. Well, it's not as simple as that, Angela. How do you mean? What's going on? Have you come to gloat? Because if you have, get on with it. Then I can spend a few minutes with my wife and son before the coppers come knocking. Well, actually, Tommy, I've not come to gloat. I've come to thank you. For saving my life. Have you gone mad? He tried to kill you! Well, no, he didn't. Craig did. What are you going on about, trying to drag a lad into yeah, this? Well, he came round to me last night and explained. Not right, son. Craig? Means nothing. Who's going to leave a kid his age? Well, actually, I do. Craig, you... You tried to kill Martin. <gasps> Katie! No! Katie! No, could you just listen, will you? What can you possibly say? Look, the police aren't going to believe him, will they? Of course they won't. Well, I think they would. I do. And you're going to ruin his life. I'll tell you what, when he realised what he'd really done, he went out that door trying oh, to stop me getting out Tommy, that. Tommy, just listen to me, will you? Look, I've had it up to here. I'm sick to death of people ruining each other's lives. It just goes on and on. And I want no more part of it. Now, if you just listen to me for a second, will you? Martin, you can't. Katie, just calm down. <sighs> Look, the lad only did what he thought was best. He thought he was going to bring his family back together. Not right, Craig. And you never know. Maybe you might have. But your dad's right. The following morning, reality finally got through to you. Yeah, only just in time. Yeah, well, that's the whole point. So you didn't phone the police then? Well, yeah, I did. I did what you asked me to. And who did you blame? I blamed myself. You what? I told him that I knew my brakes were faulty. I've been working too hard over Christmas to get them mended. And I stayed mum after the accident, so it wouldn't affect the insurance. <laughs> now, I can't say they were too pleased at me giving them the runaround, but hey, meant they could get on for the tea. So, hopefully, that should bring the investigation to a close. Well, anyway, that's it. All done. Why? And you're just going to let him get away with all this? I think we ought to go, come on. No, er... Uh, I want to say... what you've done. Thank you. Okay. No, no, please, stay. Uh, have you got dinner in? You could have a bite with us. We've got plenty. Mm, I don't know. Tommy, Tommy, just ask him to stay. Go on, it's all over and done with now. Please, Tom, just ask him to sit down. Oh, come on, Katie. Not, but our main resolution has to be our Craig. We have to give him all the care and attention that we can. You're right, man. And we will, I promise. Right, then, let's have another. Tommy, what have we just said? He's at home watching telly and we're here about to order another drink. Mm. Breaking our resolution before we start. Mm. Come on, let's go home. Right. Hiya. Hiya, all yeah. right. Are we already? Yeah, we don't want to leave our Craig on his own. All right, yeah. Anyway, all the best. Yeah, all the okay. best. Yeah, happy New Year. Yeah, happy New Year and all that. <laughs> See ya.